What's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Uh, right before we went live right now, Monkey came up to me and wanted to say hello, so I figured I'd pick him up and let him see what's going on. Oh! <laughs> Wanna say hi? <laughs> All right, let's go, buddy. Thank you. Uh, how's everybody doing? Happy Wednesday. Uh, we are going to be starting a uh, printer build today, which is really exciting. A full kit, which is something we haven't done uh, I think the Rat Rigby Minion was the last build that we did, and then it's been like resin printers, it's been uh, lasers, and we also did last week the uh, Belted Z mod on the Ender 3B2, which was a ton of fun uh, and completed successfully. I still have a couple other things I'm doing with that printer uh, related to Clipper, but the mod installed successfully. It was a five hour stream, which was really long, uh, but a ton of fun. So. Hope everybody is doing good. Uh, what's up, Opa, G Funny, uh, William Tony, uh, Snaz, Nawa, Sky Down, Pi, Zombie. So uh, this printer is the second cube, and uh, second reached out to me probably a month ish or so ago. Month ago sounds about right. Um, asking if I was interested in testing one of these out, building one, and I said, yeah, I'd love to. It'd be a really fun. Uh, printer to put together on the stream, I'd seen some about the second line of Core XY printers from Teaching Tech has done a video. Uh, Chris Riley did a video, I think on the Tank and the Go. This is the Cube, and the Cube is the newer uh, newer version, which is a smaller Core XY printer. Let me show you guys this really quick here. Let's see, uh, desktop. Uh, are you going to sit on the printer? I don't know if I'm going to sit on the printer. I'm sure I can. It feels absolutely insane. Hey Sam, uh, Christian, uh, Larry, and Mike. Looking forward to this. I have a tank and I'm curious how different. You must sit on it as a test. Okay, well then if I must, then I suppose then I must. Uh, but yeah, so the cube, um, you can configure it how you want. I'll kind of go through and show the configuration that we have here. Um, some of the key features of it. So. Uh, the build volume is not huge. 200 by 200 by 250 should be, if my math is correct, roughly eight inches by eight inches by, if that's four, that's 10 inches roughly in height. Um, the net weight is 20 kilograms, which is insane uh, for the size of this printer. Um, it does not have a ton of printed parts. So it does have some printed parts. These are all of the printed parts, this little bag right here. And some of these are extras like handles, um, there's a internal uh, active heater, so there's a mount for that. Um, yeah, so there's not a lot of printed parts. Most of the things in this kit are machined and, um, or just, um, gosh, or sheet metal. Uh, so it is, again, very heavy duty, fully enclosed. Um, uh, hey, Lisa, um, I'll need help right as this is about to start. Work it to the way of the stream. Oh, uh, we're just doing the intro, so you are nice and early. Uh, a kid, don't feel like you should sit on it. <laughs> we'll see. I, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll gauge it. <laughs> Maybe I'll put monkey on top of it. Um, but yeah, so the X carriage is made out of carbon fiber. Uh, it's fully enclosed, has a active heater. It's got three point uh, bed leveling. So I guess similar to Trident, except it's not lead screw driven. It's three point belt driven, uh, runs clipper. Um, what else? What else is on this? I think the specs were pretty impressive to me. The the hot end and extruder setup is a BMG clone and like a volcano style hot end. So it's definitely not like, I would say that there's probably better extruders and hot ends out there. However, uh, the BMG is, was and still is a very solid uh, extruder. And I think that part of the reason why they go with, again, like a clone in this situation is that they're trying to keep the cost down and you can also pick this up if I'm not mistaken without a hot ender extruder if you want to just source your own um, So the build version that I've got right here is non high win um, It has a octopus pro and TMC 2225s uh, No Raspberry Pi. I don't believe Do they have the Raspberry Pi option now. They don't um, uh, XY steppers. I think they're the MK. Oh servos. Yeah, so the the um, uh, drivers, that's pretty unique. So I believe I have the MKS servo variant. Uh, you can self source, which I think a lot of people probably would want to do on the hot end extruder, but mine came with BMG clone and Volcano. Um, build plate, smooth and textured. 
enclosure. It does have an enclosure. And then you can actually get it fully assembled. I don't think that most, uh, for 300 bucks, like, would get it assembled. But hey, if you don't have the time, but you want one of the machines, they'll actually assemble it for you. What's up, zombie? Hey, Carl. Um, and then, let's see, country, uh, USA. And then the... So the kit price is like, if you go with this version of it, and again, if you don't get the hot and extruder and you have that yourself, you can go even less expensive at a thousand dollars or sub a thousand dollars. It seems like a really good deal. The biggest killing, uh, like the biggest factor, I think that's a little bit brutal is the shipping of $174. And I understand why it's so expensive. Um, like this, oops, that's wrong cam. So it ships in two boxes. This is a, a very heavy long awkward box and this this box with all the other components is also quite large and quite heavy and it's shipping i believe from taiwan um quite quickly with dhl uh, you you'll get it uh, i don't know what the like how long it will take according to them but i mean it was roughly from the time it shipped like the next week or that week um i did talk to them uh about if they're trying to potentially get these in the United States and they did say that that's something they're interested in so if they're able to find a reseller in the States then I think it would help a ton with the shipping cost because again the price point of a thousand bucks for a Core XY machine that seems like it's going to be quite capable is a really solid deal to me so um hey what's up Jose I did sit on my tank hey Mike hey what's up Rod um, as always, we will be doing our Polymaker filament giveaway, and that will go live in an hour and 24 minutes, roughly. Uh, there's actually a $100 coupon as well, too, um, which is kind of cool. So, uh, yeah, so 886 right now. Um, so that helps with the shipping. It takes basically $100 off the shipping, if you look at it like that. Uh, hey, what's up, Daniel? Okay, so, oh, I was looking at myself, or <laughs> the camera on myself. But yeah, the coupon takes off $100 right now, which if you, makes the shipping way less brutal um, at $74. Uh, hey, what's up? Hey, Katana, yeah, I saw you posted in the uh, stream about this print originally. Hey, Grants, I'm interested to see how this turns out. This machine has a lot of interesting features compared to other Quirks Y kits out there. My SK Cube is printing right next to me, nice. So, I looked, um, it is, me being as prepared as I normally am, I had skimmed the tools and was like, yeah, I've got these things. Uh, I don't have all these things. So I have super glue, that's fine. I've got lubricating oil or grease. I don't have Loctite, which is a uh, bummer. I looked at the first couple of steps that I think we'll cover today and don't believe we'll need it, but uh, I need to order that. And then RTV silicone rubber, I definitely do not have that. Double-sided tape, we should be good on. Tissue and cotton swabs, we should be good on. Uh, and everything else as well. So. Um, I think we will just kind of get going on this. Uh, let's see. So change log. There's been some variants. Um, something you need to know. Uh, the second tries to be helpful and provide as clear instructions as we can, but we will not be responsible for any of your loss caused during your assembly process. Yes. So be careful <laughs> assembling. And if you're not sure, double check everything. Um, so manual structure, each page in this manual is written in similar structure. Ignore the step you've already know how to do it, but you must read the exam step to make sure you do it correctly. Uh, direct definition, okay. Uh, assemble on a, on a flat and solid surface, which we've got. Massive shout out to Pi for loaning me his slab of granite. Uh, I've been building printers on a piece of marble for the last, whew, I don't know, ever since the original V0. And I'm, I brought it here. I had it sitting over there on the side, I think after the V Minion build. And I tripped over um, my camera cable, caught myself on the garage. This marble slab fell in between my legs. I was barefoot. It missed my toe by inches. Uh, and it hit the metal bracket on the, the closet. And I think all of that force going into one spot, it, it shattered the marble in half. It was the scariest eight seconds of my life uh, from trip to bang to what just happened. Um, so <laughs> thank you to uh, again, for to pie for letting me borrow this piece of granite, I am going to have to get another piece, uh, hard surface to build on. It was very scary. Yes, it could have been very bad. I looked down at my big toe and was like, oh, thank you. Like, just counting my blessings. Oh, quartz, okay. <laughs> I guess you could take it for granted. 
Quartz, I correct myself. Um, okay, so assemble on a flat solid surface, stiff and heavy table, large tile, granite table, uh, not on carpet. God, that sounds like a terrible idea. Uh, thin or unstable desk, tighten bolts diagonally, so we will do the little star pattern thing. Um, also tighten screws with proper force. Uh, for the torque used on linear rails and blocks, please refer to high wind spec. Uh, we are, we're not going with the high wind rails. Belt length, of, the total length of two XY and three Z belts is about 8.5 meters, and a roll of nine meter belt is included. Keep this in mind and don't cut too long a section while installing belts. An extra five to 10 centimeters should be no problem. Um, always turn on with steppers connected. The stepper motor driver board needs an electronic load to function normally. It is highly possible to damage the drivers if steppers do not exist or are not connected well. Okay, good to know. Don't drink and drive. If you feel hungry, go eat. If you feel sleepy, go sleep. Uh, if wife is calling you, go help. <laughs> the great, uh, great advice in the guide. Keep a clear head. Uh, you'll get a sturdy and stable machine. Um, uh, before firing up your tank, check every item in this checklist. This must be like a pre-flight check. Yep. Very cool. Uh, still having problems. There's the Facebook group, which I did join uh, more just to see what everyone was doing with this and enjoy. Okay. So uh, again, self-printed parts I already did. They are available in the GitHub repository. Um, there is they did a pretty good job of organizing everything. So there's a folder called must and each of these contains one STL. Um, the step file for it, the slicing orientation, and then information about like quantity of them, infill, support, material. I did everything in, um, this is all in uh, Polymaker ASA, and this is their uh, Army Green. Army Green is the color. Uh, because this has a internal heater, uh, I didn't want to risk it with anything else I didn't, want, I didn't want to risk it with anything else that might uh, sag or warp over time. Hey, what's up, BBs? Yes, excellent advice, Alien. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, you could, we could <laughs> I should apply their guide to just day-to-day -day life, not just this build. Um, so again, you've got all the STLs, then there's optional, which include the heater box, which I printed, carry handle I printed, chamber thermistor I printed. I think I printed all of these, if I'm being honest with you guys. I, I went through, there wasn't a whole time I had a spool of the the ASA and I was like, I'm just going to print all the things. Um, and then the reference, you've got extruder carriages, um, benchmark cube, stuff like that. So that is there and we should all be taken care of. Uh, there's also a component list. Um, they do provide, <clears throat> I'm going to have to move the side camera a moment, tenderly here. Uh, but they do provide a physical checklist on the top, but you can see someone went through with a pen and just marked everything. So. Hopefully everything is in here because um, looks like it was all hand checked. So, uh, but there is also another guide or another checklist here that you can run through as well. <laughs> Galaxy Dark Blue. Yeah, G Funny, the Army Green is awesome. Uh, G Funny just finished his Micron Plus and uh, I don't, was it the primary or accent color you did in Army Green? I think it was the primary, uh, but it's, it's awesome filament and I printed it all on a switch wire and it did a it did a really good job of printing out uh, the ASA. Uh, okay, so we've got checklists, like I said, scrolling down, yada, yada. Pulley sets is the first thing. So I think what we'll also do is, um, oh, let me like updates on things. So um, next week would technically be our Monday stream if we're doing the every other Monday thing. However, my parents are visiting on, they're flying in Sunday. Um, Friday is my 30th birthday and so I'm stoked that they're coming out and we're doing sort of like a late birthday celebration with them. Because of that, I'm not going to stream Monday because I want to spend time with them. I haven't seen them since we moved. Um, hey, Rod, thanks for becoming a member. Um, uh, uh, th <laughs> sounds throw off my train of thought. Uh, yes, but I am. they're going to be here Wednesday and I am going to be streaming Wednesday. However, Wednesday we are going to be building the Vector Finesse uh, headphones, the printed headphones. Um, I'm building the larger head and the smaller min version. Uh, the larger version is going to be replacing my daily headphones for editing and stuff. And the smaller ones, uh, I'm giving, I'm gifting to my dad. So I want to build that while he's here. And then the following week we will continue on this, um, second. So I just wanted to sort of update with the schedule. Uh, also the, um, one year stream anniversary is going to be coming up 
on oh alien or lisa if you guys remember the date i posted it in our chat uh but i'm going to be scheduling that between now and sunday so that way if anybody wants to be there it'll be on a wednesday normal time it's like the week of the 20 something i wanted to have a little bit of a gap between earth and that stream so that way if anyone's traveling they can hopefully be home for that um but i will um I will schedule that very, very soon. So that way it's, it's set. It's going to be in October, uh, October 20 something. So roughly it's less than 30 days from today. I want the galaxy ABS and ASA so bad. Uh, look at Yusu resin. It's being released now. I think I saw, um, I think I saw somebody print with that resin in is, is, uh, let me see here. Calendar. October. All right. Uh, no, I didn't get a Wi-Fi upgrade. I actually remembered to click low latency before I go live. That's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, so it's got to be the 26th then. Um, I will post it, but the 26th... Oh, it is really fast. It is crazy fast. Maybe I did super low latency this time, but Wi-Fi should be the same. Yeah, so it's gonna be on the 26th of October, normal time. Uh, we're gonna hang out, we're gonna have fun. I'm gonna eat pizza, there'll be giveaways. It should be really cool. So again, I will schedule that, but I wanted to at least let everybody that's here know about it now. So that way, if you wanna mark your calendars, um, you can be here. Uh, Akuma Mods, I'm not sure, Carl. I did see somebody post something yeah, the chat is crazy. I don't know, um, let me see here if I look. It doesn't let me see the latency, so I, I don't know. I, I thought I just did the standard latency, but no, why? internet should be the same. Okay. Uh, uh, um, so I think before we start building, let's take a look at some of what comes in this kit. Um, let's see. I think this is gonna be the more fun box. I don't know that I'll take everything out uh, right now but I think this will be cool to kind of see again some of the components. Let's move this guy off to the side. Move the top cover. Hey, G Funny, thanks for the gifted membership. Hey, Sam, you got it. <laughs> thanks, G Funny. I uh, gotta head out for a bit, folks. Uh, off the cables, gotta pull up the storm tracker on my phone. Man, stay safe, Daniel. I, uh, I've been looking briefly at kind of what's, oh, I've been looking every hour kind of on what's going on in Florida and it looks absolutely insane. So I hope that you are not in the direct storm's path and that everything's okay for you, man. It's been, uh, it's been designing collaboration with my Facebook group and you said, oh, interesting. No, I haven't seen anything, Carl. Can you link me? Um, can you link me to that resin maybe in the discord? Uh, Katana, are you sourcing any parts yourself? No, I'm not sourcing any parts myself, at least not initially. Uh, initially, I'm building it based off of the uh, config that I showed in here. So non Highwind, Octopus Pro, MKS Servo, BMG Clone, and Volcano, uh, PEI with Enclosure. Um, however, that being said, I'm going to start off with the BMG and the Volcano. Um, and there is a really good chance that that will be something I will be upgrading. And then I will very likely also add a, uh, touch screen with clipper screen on it. But yeah, for right now, this is, um, awesome. Yeah. Sounds great, Carl. Uh, for right now, no, it's all part of the kit. So, all right, let's go to, Hey Dane, thanks for becoming a member. All right. So oh, that's my face. We want side cam. Okay. So. I am going to just kind of lift things up, show, and then put back in so it's organized. Because we're going to have a gap between starting today and the next build, I just want to keep everything organized. So uh, the main board is the Octopus Pro, which I'm really excited to use. I have um, I had an Octopus sitting here for a very, very long time, and I just never had a printer to put it inside because the switch wire was relatively, you know, didn't need all of the connections. Uh, and the V0 certainly didn't. And so I'll actually get to use a uh, Octopus, or in this case, Octopus Pro, which is really cool. We've got a solid state relay, uh, power supply. I, I would imagine it's not a mean well, but actually, no, it is a mean well. Um, that's cool. Let me open this up really quick here. 
Uh, yeah, I think the weakest part of this is the stock X shooter and hot end. Yeah, I feel the same way. That was my thoughts. So it does come with a Meanwell LRS uh, 224 volts. The, I wonder if the bed's running off AC, um, but that is a nice, that is a nice power supply. I was thinking because again, like with them sort of keeping the price at a thousand dollars that maybe they hadn't, um, maybe they went with a sort of off-brand power supply, but they did not, which is nice to see. Um, here are the uh, servos, which is crazy. I've never used anything like this on, um, I've never used anything like this, if I'm being honest with you. I mean, I've seen servos primarily used on things like CNC machines. I've seen a couple of companies reach out um, regarding some like closed loop steppers, which I think these actually may be more, okay, closed loop stepper, cool, okay. Gotcha, so this is a closed loop stepper. I was gonna say, this looks similar to what some of the companies that had reached out over the last year um, had shown. So, um, I would imagine though, they f at least function in the same way where again, they don't lose steps. They can like remember their location. If you basically bump them, they'll return right back to their spot, which is pretty cool. So these are neat. I I've never had these in a printer before. Again, I I'd seen, seen them uh, for a bit but that's about the extent of it. Uh, we've got another solid state relay, another one of these closed loop steppers down here. Um, yeah, so the drivers for these two uh, steppers, basically you've got the, looks like, it almost looks like it's a jumper board. So these are the MKS APT V 1.0s. And I, I'm thinking that this is just going into the Palulu style slot and it's just almost like a breakout board to then go to this board, which is, what's going to sort of run and control it, which is pretty wild. I have them on my tank and I love them. Uh, yeah, they know their own rotation and they got drivers built in. Okay, that makes sense then, which is why I don't see any sort of TMC driver on this guy. Yeah, so I'm excited to use these just because again, it's it's something new to me. Um, I don't see that I, on a, as a standard on printers uh, at this point. So that's very cool. Uh, power supply, we've got, oh, this looks like it's, probably for insulation. Um, they look like kind of like little rubber gasket strips that are probably gonna go around it, around the enclosure. Uh, 3D Experiments, Daniel uh, Walker, sold by the second company. <clears throat> oh, so oh, who sells the kit? Sorry, I, I, I thought you were tagging me. Daniel, it throws me off. I forgot there's always a bunch of Daniels. <laughs> I think in one stream there was like three or four Daniels. Uh, yeah, so sold by the company on their own website right now. I When I talked to them, it did sound like they are interested in uh, finding a vendor in the States, which would help with shipping, but uh, right now it's sold directly from them. Uh, so we've got our uh, power input, cables, cables, uh, thermistor, zip ties. These are our TMC 2225s, which I wonder how many we have of these then. Looks like four of these then. So I would imagine three for the Z motors and one for the extruder and the X, Y, which are going to be moving the quickest are going to be using the closed loop steppers. Um, that's about it in here. Thermistor is just a standard, uh, standard cartridge style thermistor uh, in the center. So we got, it looks like two smaller ones, which I'm imagining for X, Y. Uh, wait, why do we have so many? I would think three for Z and then X, Y. Oh, Y has two probably. Okay, so three for Z, that makes sense. Three for Z, two for Y, one for X. Yeah, my math, mathing is is tough today. Uh, we've got a bag of lots of metal, uh, metal brackets. This will be interesting. Again, like I'm excited to build this. It's just way different than any of the other uh, like boron stuff or, or rat rig we put together. Uh, it comes with, this looks like a carbon, this is a carbon filter. Uh, that's cool. I didn't even realize it came with a carbon filter. Is this going to be running Clipper? Yes, it is. Hey, Stefan, uh, greetings from Romania. How cool. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I was thinking of closed loop on the Bonsai, but that's a bit too much. My IT classes have three SEMs. Total chaos. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds insane. Yeah, it's going to be running Clipper. So. Um, kind of cool if you go to the SK Cube on GitHub, 
uh, under firmware, they have both Clipper and they've got RepRap firmware available. We are definitely going Clipper route with the Big Tree Tech Octopus. They've got the printer.cfg um, and some info about the config file. So uh, very, very exciting. Hey, what's up, Viking? Happy Wednesday. Uh, what else? What else is in here? More beefy metal components. I mean, there's just everything in here is like, it's just so much metal. Like I said, there's not a lot of printed parts, um, which is just so different than what I've been used to. Uh, and I'm excited just to sort of see. We've got, wow, look at these little motors. These, I've never seen these before. I'm imagining that these are going to be for the, uh, there's three of them, so they must be for the Z axis. And uh, because they've got this gearing on the end of it, I'm imagining this is their 1.8 degree. Um, I'm imagining this is what keeps them from dropping when they, when the bed loses power. Uh, these look very cool. <clears throat> hey, what's up Dutch? And then we've got our tiny little, um, almost pancake style. I don't know if it's quite a pancake, but tiny little pancake style motor, which is going to be, I imagine, for our extruder. So we'll put these back. Yeah, I didn't realize that the uh, Z was using a special type of motor. Um, I have no idea what this is. Uh, oh, could this be a... I have no idea what this is. I see a... Um, Oh, not a capacitor. I see a di diode, diode inside of here. I wonder if this is a chamber thermistor. I I've never seen anything like this. I don't, a fuse. Oh, it's just a fuse. Oh, I guess, yep, that does make sense. Input there, output there. It just looks, it's different looking than anything I've seen. <laughs> okay, fuse holder, gotcha. Uh, thank you for confirming that. Uh, we've got our carbon fiber pieces, which it does say that we want to seal in with some glue around the edges to prevent us from getting itchy, but it's actual, actual carbon fiber, which is pretty cool. Uh, the probe on it is a standard inductive probe. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I'm kind of curious. I'm not the biggest fan of inductive probes, uh, and especially with this being fully enclosed and me planning on printing high temp with it. Uh, I could see that being something I may eventually mod to a physical uh, clicky switch. So we'll see how that goes. Tons of components. I mean, just, I, gosh, I might need to print out my uh, organizer or take an organizer from, uh, from something else because there is a ton of components. Hey, Mr. Joda, what's going on? Um, we've got a PTFE tube, which I'm imagining is a guide tube. Triangle Lab Kit, uh, this has our, the BMG clone, and does it have our BMG clone? We've got heater cartridge, thermistor, uh, heat sink cooling fan, all metal hot end. Yeah, so here's the Volcano. Volcano clone again. So I'm curious to see how it performs. I'm definitely going to install it as is, just to see, uh, similar to what we did with the Rat Rig V Minion before I do any sort of upgrading to it. And then this is something also that I think is very cool. If I can get this to close, of course I can't. There we go. Um, let's see what we have over here. So some beefy fans. I think one of them is probably going to be an exhaust fan uh, to that attaches to the carbon filter. And another one which might help to cycle the air inside of the cube uh, because it comes with this, which is a heater for the, for the printer itself. Um, so... I'm really excited to see how this goes. Um, I have used a 3D printer uh, with an actively heated chamber before, but it was a much larger printer and one of, more expensive, like two and a half times the price. And the other one was way more expensive, like industrial grade. So curious to see like how much of a difference this makes in terms of printing ABS, ASA, polycarbonate, stuff like that. Uh, so that's pretty much the meat of what's up here. What's down below? Uh, down below, there's not as much, but I'll show you guys. Ooh. I'm gonna place this back in, in just a second here, I think. Um, so right here we've got, it comes with a powder coated PEI bed. You can see the other side smooth. Yeah, and then smooth PEI sheet installed, magnetic. 
Uh, we have got our plate, which looks like it's, I would say a quarter inch, a quarter inch thick aluminum. And then we've got our uh, 110 volt, 350 watt um, uh, silicone heated pad, which will attach to it. I think that's probably, no, that is not it. And then we've got the encloser, uh, the panels for this as well. So tons of panels, which will be the last thing on here. But yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be a super fun build. Um, I have a feeling it's going to take quite a while, but maybe not. Um, I don't have any form of gauge as far as how long this, uh, how long this build typically takes. This is, this is also their newer, um, I believe this is also their newer printer out of their line. So like if you go, I think it shows when they released. Um, let's see, second, uh, where are you? Yeah, so the tank was launched in April, 2021. Uh, the cube, was launched, okay, so it's not the newest. This one is the SKGO 3. Uh, the Cube was launched in May of 2022, so a fairly new release from them. Oh, going to use your birth. Maybe I will, uh, G Funny. Um, yeah, G, G Funny sent me a super cool birthday present. It's a, uh, it's like a small drill. I'll show you guys really quick here. I've got it sitting over here. So I don't really have any tools, uh, at least not fancy tools, because I just haven't had a garage, but G40 sent this over for, for a birthday present, and this thing is awesome. So this might be a great build to actually use this. Um, so I'm excited. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta remember, just like the, the WoW stick, that I actually have tools for certain things that can make it a bit easier. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Olaf? Okay, so that is everything in here for right now. Um, let me put this off to the side for a second and take out some of the frame, which is in this other box. And then we will get to going on this, but I did want to cover sort of what came with it. And the kit that I have is basically the, um, no, not entry kit, but they do have like, like they do have other options. And this is sort of the getting one of everything on the list, but not going with the high wind rails and not going with, um, what else do they have on there that was something different? They had a couple other options. Uh, okay. All right. So, printed parts, and then this. Uh, so much bubble wrap. Uh, yes. Throwing that all over there. Uh, finished torquing by hand, though. Yeah, I need to. That's my biggest thing. So, um, my parents are, like I said, coming out for my birthday. And they asked like, oh, do you have anything you want for your birthday? And I was like, tools, I just want tools. Cause especially with the CNC stuff in the garage now and the lasers, like I just, I want some wood tools. I, the only drill I have, oh, got this awesome, uh, awesome drill now, but the only, or screw, it says screwdriver, but this is a, this is a very tanky screwdriver. But the drill that I have is like an old wired Harbor Freight one. And so I want to get like a cordless drill and an impact driver, an orbital sander and stuff like that. Um, so I was looking and I know that you can adjust sort of the different, you can adjust the different settings as far as how much torque you want it to have. But I, I don't feel confident in my ability to gauge what is too much or what's going to strip something. So I will need, I will need to play around with it a lot. I can't, so this is, oh my God. So this is what comes in this box. This is, this is the entire thing that comes inside this box. And this, this weighs an absolute ton. So these are, I believe it's all steel. Um, let me see, I've got uh, from our other stream. Yeah, the stuff that I'm getting for the garage is all Ryobi uh, because it's fairly, no, maybe it's not steel. It's not magnetic. I know last time we discovered that not all steel is magnetic. Maybe it is aluminum. I feel like it's steel though. Um, yeah, the, the stuff I'm getting for the garage is all Ryobi, kind of because it's a little less expensive and it seems okay. And it's definitely gonna be better than the um, Harbor Freight stuff I've been, 
I've been using. Um, okay, so we've got these all out. I'm just gonna leave these out and get rid of this big box because the footprint of this box is much larger because they have it completely encased in foam. Um, and the first thing we really need to do, I think, is just building, let's see, building, stainless is non-magnetic. I don't think this is stainless though. I mean, it, I suppose it could be, um, but it, regardless, I mean, it's very, very, very heavy and kind of scary. <laughs> I just, I'm clumsy. I want it, I want to get it all together. Uh, I get to walk from high performance stuff and Ryobi for the random tools. Yeah. I, I think that I definitely am just going with Ryobi for a lot of stuff for the garage. And then if, um, if again, I end up running into issues with certain tools or need something better than maybe I'll look elsewhere, but uh, Ryobi is going to be 9,000 times better than not having anything at all. Uh, hey, what's up, Raj? Uh, not all steel has enough iron to be attracted to magnets. I think this is steel. I, I'm almost, I'm almost positive it's steel. I just don't know what kind of steel. Uh, okay, so going over here, the first thing it seems like it wants us to do. <clears throat> I'm beginning with 3D printing and really loving it. Oh, nice. Well, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the stream. Um, so the first step, it seems like before we do anything else is it wants us to put together the pulley sets. So basically, um, these brackets, these parts, this connection piece, it, se it seems like this is the first thing I thought we were going to be putting the frame together first, but it seems like this is first. I'm almost wondering if we need to, or if we can just start with the frame, um, because it looks like for the frame, we don't install any of those right away. I'm thinking we maybe do the frame first. Yeah, I want to do the frame first, guys. I, we're going to start with the frame and then we'll do the pulleys after just so I can get some of these bigger components put together in a cube. Um, sturdy and simple steel. Okay, cool. So it is a steel frame. Then that does confirm that. Does the passively heated enclosure have any effect on PLA, PTG, and TPU prints? Uh, yeah, you, more airflow, more better for PLA, generally speaking. Um... I mean, I'm sure there's a such thing as too much, uh, like depending on again, like if you're printing in a garage and it's like freezing or something like that. But generally speaking, um, you don't really want more heat with PLA, like a heated enclosure typically means that your parts won't look quite as nice. Uh, I, that's a lot of the reason why when printing PLA, people tend to upgrade the airflow on their, um, tool heads just because it likes. It, it needs to be hot when it comes out, but then it instantly wants to be cold. Yeah, I mean, it probably won't be an issue if you're saying passive heating, uh, but I certainly wouldn't want any active heating. Uh, and if you have your printer enclosed, then if you're if you're starting to see that like maybe overhangs aren't looking as nice, I would open it up to help with cooling it a little bit quicker. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this up. I, every single week, uh, find where my my exacto is and then I lose it right when the stream's gonna start. So let me grab let me grab the exacto really quick here. Um let's be in the garage. I grabbed a bunch of stuff in preparation for the stream, but there's always something that I miss. There it is. Box cutter. Also good news, um, we've been talking about me getting a TV for the wall forever so that way I can see chat without having to look really closely at the screen and I finally, I finally ordered a TV. I found one on Amazon that was on sale. Um, I was hoping it was going to be here uh, by today, but it is not. So uh, it will be here tomorrow and by next week it will be up on the wall. So that should be really cool for me to be able to just look right there and see chat and make sure everything's in focus and stuff. because. These screens are fine, but they're just pretty dang small. And, and at least the one for chat is just really small. So it, it makes it a little bit harder to keep up with everything going on. Let me also move you guys a bit closer. Uh, so far we got hit with tons of rain and 50 miles an hour gusts of wind. Oh man. <clears throat> I 
All right, I'm just gonna place these, place these out. I will say not the prettiest of parts. I imagine cutting these are tough. It would be kind of cool. I mean, again, and I'm coming from like, you know, building the borons and stuff where it's like, oh wow, these crazy LDO anodized frames, but it would be kind of cool to have uh, an option to even pay a little bit more to have sort of a cleaned up colored frame or something like that. I guess we'll just stack all these right now. I don't really... <clears throat> I would imagine, can you, um, that looks like stainless, okay. Can you anodize uh, steel or no? I mean, I've only primarily seen it done with aluminum. I don't know if with steel, you'd have to go with a different method of treating, like some sort of powder coating or something like that. But can you can you do the same anodization process on, on steel? Very, very tanky parts and it actually looks like I might be mistaken um, but that looks like there's actually like welding um, like they welded these pieces together uh, no anodized steel yes anodized steel okay two yeses one no three yeses one no so I, I'm gonna go with you can but it's different but yeah there's actually it looks like I'm not a um, <laughs> again I've never welded but from what I've seen, I think that's considered a tack weld, right? Both of these bottom pieces have it. Uh, you can even do it at home. Oh, interesting. It would be fun to do. I certainly am not going to not build this so that we can experiment with anodization. But I would, I would like to experiment with that and see, see if I can do it. See if I can do it well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry parts. Okay. So I think we'll probably leave the, well, if we're putting them all together right now then I will take off the covers on them, but let's get them like that. Put this off to the side a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, yes, you can. We added it for even more rust resistance. Oh, cool. Okay. There's so many fun things I'd love to. They're like on my growing list of like things to try. Um, yeah, anodization is something that I think would be pretty cool just to see. I, I wouldn't anticipate it's going to look nearly as nice as like LDO, but it would be fun to try. Uh, okay, so. It looks like the frame is just using one bolt. So general ideas assemble loosely connected frame first and allow it to shake like a skeleton as shown in the first video. Okay. Um, find a flat surface, assemble the frame, uh, assemble the frame pieces, but don't fasten the nuts, fasten the nuts in stages after all the frame pieces have been put together. Okay, so it seems like uh, we're going to be using most all of the frame pieces. I wonder how hard it's going to be for me to tell what parts what. So let's see. Um, we've got back pieces seem relatively easy for me to tell. I mean, one's got the outlet, one's got a fan attachment. Two front pieces are very easy to see, but I'm curious about the other guys, how easy or difficult it is going to be to tell what's what. Um, I mean, this is a pretty dang good, it's a pretty good photo, uh, Triceracote. I mean, it feels like this is a pretty good photo of seeing like, okay, this part needs to have the holes there. We can just try and go based off this um, and see how that goes. And then it looks like we need RH M4 by 10s, flange nuts M4. Okay, let's see if we can somehow just find these out of this big section of tools. Again, I think, I think between now, we'll see if I have time, but 
uh, between now and when we actually do the next build for this. Oh no, it looks like the nut bag opened up. Okay, there's definitely dropping nuts. There's definitely a hole in the nut bag. There it is. Part of me is, is wishing I had, uh, I, <laughs> I wanted to open this up on stream to take a look at everything, but part of me is thinking that Maybe I should have at least taken all the hardware out and built my little enclosure for it, but can't change it now. So we'll just, oops, do our best to carry on. Lots of hardware, metal hinges, we dropped, dropped some components there. And then all the nuts on the ground is what we'll start using. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay, I think I got them all. And if not, they're probably in the foam and well, it looks like all the other bags are sealed fine, but the the flange nuts, which are kind of cool looking, I have also not, a lot of firsts for me here. Um, <clears throat> oh, we have 79 people watching, that's exciting. Yeah, if you have not, 84 it looks like now, uh, please hit the like button, it'd be awesome. Our goal is to hit 100 likes by the end of the stream even beyond that, but 100 likes is, is like the target, which would be awesome. Uh, so yeah, these are the nuts. They basically look like nylon lock nuts. Oh, that's not, that's not very pretty. Come on camera, there we go. Nylon lock nuts, but they've got a flanged end on them. And it looks like this is primarily what we're gonna use for, <clears throat> primarily what we're gonna be using for assembling the frame. Let's see. Uh, flange nut M4. It's gotta be those guys. Unless those are M3, but... And then it says we're using M4 by 10s, which are... 4 by 10s, these guys. Yeah, that must be the nut that we're using. It would be nice if there was a little bit of a, um... Image, like, just to kind of show... Oh, okay, cool. I was gonna say... <laughs> We might be in trouble. It says thread locker, but optional. So these are lock nuts. I think we're going to be okay. Um, but if you have a thread locker, then this is also a section where you can add it on the frame. Hey, what's up, Eggy? All right, so let's go ahead and I guess just start assembling loosely. Um, we'll start off with I think the base, which is going to be, uh, it's gonna take me a minute here to figure out what parts go where. So, looks like this goes on this side. And then a similar looking one. This guy goes on this side. And this is back piece. And then front piece has, uh, this looks like front piece. Uh, fasten stages, yada yada, frame components, lock tight. Uh, didn't know it was loosely at first. Place it on a solid, okay. When fasten the frame, hold the bolts steady and turn the nuts as they won't be stripped as easily. Holes on the frame, might not be aligned if you fasten that the wrong way, as shown below. Wait, holes on the frame might not be aligned if you fasten the nuts in the wrong way, as shown below. Wrong. Okay, gotcha. So basically, again, it's just saying don't go tightening something 100% and then moving on to the next 100%. Do tightening all of them halfway, tightening all of them 75%, so in stages. Make sure the frame is on flat piece. Um, two Y frame pieces are not used here in the later chapter eight. Why 
uh, rails and XY joiner will be installed on the Y frame piece first before putting them on the frame. Okay, so we'll follow what we see here, and hopefully that's right. Love the look of it, but wish it wasn't bare steel. Yeah, I um, I definitely understand that. I, I definitely pick function over form, uh, but it's I I do love the look of the anodized aluminum or anodized parts. That's you know kind of the way most of the printer builds come now. So. Uh, that is something I, I assume that they've probably gotten that feedback already, but I typically try my best to give feedback to any manufacturer. So I will say that it was my feeling and, you know, um, based off of some others in chat, I'm sure, I'm sure it's cost related, uh, to keep costs down. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know for certain. Maybe it's not. So don't quote me on that. No one said, Hey, we're not doing it because cost, but I, I would, I personally think that a lot of people that are building a custom printer kit that's, you know, like a thousand dollars would be willing to pay, oh, stuff's gonna bug me, um, would be willing to pay extra to have a colored frame or, you know, a black frame, even if it's just, even just a black frame, maybe don't offer a bunch of color options. All right, some of this blue is hard to get off. I'm, as long as the metal's out, I can, take off this a little bit later on. So we're going to start with that. I do still think it's going to look awesome in the end. Like the photos of it, even with the bare steel look pretty freaking cool. But yeah, I, I do agree that um, because some of the steel parts especially look kind of on the rougher side, not functionally again, they look fine functionally, but as far as aesthetically, uh, the, the coating could be pretty cool. I like my steel box. It's shiny beside my, <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's just what they're going for as far as it's kind of the look they want. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to peel these off as quick as I can, guys. Uh, I think game plan today really is gonna be get frame assembled and hopefully get the pulley sets all completed so that way uh, we can start attaching them to the frame on the next stream. The uh, the screws are labeled though, which is nice. So like, um, I mean again, for example, M4 by 10, oh, come on camera, M4 by 10. So they are at least nicely labeled. Um, so it might not be terrible not having a good organizer as long as you just open them as needed per section. Uh, it was like 30 or 40 dollars more to be black i think it would be worth or ten dollars for a spray can to make it pink <laughs> uh anodize is a downfall for commercial environment it scratches off too easily gotcha i i mean i could see that even with the uh original v0 build that i did there was a couple of parts where when i was um screwing in some of the smaller screws where my Screwdriver slipped and I scratched the frame, so I, I could see that. I still think the option, you know, the option would be nice, but the vibe I'm getting, uh, the vibe I've gotten is that it's a relatively small company second. Um, and so I imagine that, you know, again, if the printers sell more of them and the project or projects because there's multiple printers grow that that could open up additional customization and, and you know things of that nature all right yeah i'm just gonna leave on some of the blue i'll take it off later on when i've got time i don't want you guys to have to watch me just peeling off peeling off cover the entire time <clears throat> Come on.
Okay. All right. First parts are off and this should be the base. And again, we're going to, looks like for all of them, if I'm not mistaken, bolts are going from outside inward. Uh, let me grab, let's see if I've got a small adjustable. They're not adjustable, but just a small wrench in here that matches the nut size. Slightly too big. Oh, perfect. Okay, adorable little wrench and then driver. <clears throat> too big. Perfect. Okay. Um, put you over here. So we are going to start by attaching these. And it looks like uh, this piece is going to be like this. And it looks like, it looks like front and back go over the sides. So roughly like this. And then I'm just going to, again, like, we're not gonna tighten these very much at all. Um, These are the wrong sized ones. And it says it wants us to, I think I'm gonna start off, um, I'm going to start off by doing it incorrectly. <laughs> so because right now we're just sort of placing them Uh, because right now we're just sort of placing them and we're not fully tightening them. It wants us to tighten it, like basically holding the hex head in place and tightening using the wrench. But for right now, I'm going to turn the driver to tighten them initially. And then when we do the final tightening, like before I, uh, do that, that's when I'll switch over and use the wrench to actually tighten it. Uh, I think it'll help speed things up a bit. And I don't, I don't foresee that being problematic. Um, so let's see. So otherwise. I think this is gonna take a very long time to get the frame part together. All right, uh, where did we put the nuts? There okay. Yeah, so I'm just gonna turn it like one turn to get it locked in and then we'll move on to the next one. Just to get, just to kind of get the frame going together. Otherwise it's, if I'm hand turning each one and moving this out, it's gonna take a really long time. So I'll use it for the actual tightening process. But again, just for kind of setting things in place, we'll, we'll not do that. Uh, let's grab it to get set in some. Yeah, the, um, I mean, again, how much did I say this thing weighed? I think it's like 40, 45 pounds or something like that. It's, it's definitely no joke. <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited. Um, I am super excited to see this thing come together here. All right. I don't know that I can't remember if or when I've built a printer kit that's not using just standard extrusions. Like everything, everything typically uses standard extrusions. Ain't it? Yeah, yeah, ain't it? <laughs> That, okay, that's fair, that's fair. I did build the ANA and that was acrylic. That was like before the transition 
I feel like Creality led the way when it comes to changing low cost printers to having extrusions or using extrusions. The, um, yeah, let's not fully tighten that. The, not that they were the first by any means, cause like my Fulgur Tech 2020 was, um, my Fulgur Tech 2020 used extrusions very early on. Uh, but most of the printers were acrylic still. That doesn't seem right. Why do you not seem right? Oh, snap. Okay, that's how it goes. It might not be that hard to square it. I mean, based off the way... Um... Hey, what's up, Jerry? Uh, what hot and extruder combo are you going to use? Uh, so it comes with a Bontech clone, a BMG clone, and the Volcano hot end. And because of that, I'm going to start off with using it for my initial testing. However, I doubt that's what I'll use long term. Um, maybe I'll end up throwing a Revo on it or something like that. I, I don't entirely, I don't know. I haven't really thought that far yet, if I'm being honest with you. Any commercial 3D rarely uses extrusion anyhow. Uh... You said, I hope I will use yours. Olaf, what, what, uh, what are you talking about? All right, let's drop in the screws in here. It is, I, I wish I could pat like, <laughs> maybe in the future when technology is better, I'll be able to like pass around an object and you guys can feel the weight of it. But like, it is just nuts to me how freaking heavy this is for just these four pieces that make up the base. All right, let's not fully tighten it. <clears throat> Oh, the Volcano V2, that's right. Duh. Maybe in Metaverse, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um... Still nice and loose. Okay. All right. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So let's go ahead now and do. And let's do the side uh, side pieces. Um. Wait, did I? No, I don't think I did. It looks like these are just gonna sit. Ah! It looks like these are just gonna sit like that. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's do the side pieces. And then we'll do top. And then the two on the back. Although it looks like we I'm not I'm not entirely sure if the image here includes the two pieces we're not supposed to put on right now or not, but worst comes to worst, I can take off. If if there are two pieces we're maybe not supposed to put on, I think it'd be these ones. It says Two. Um, okay, it says we're using 14 of 16 frame pieces. So how many pieces are here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, cool. So yeah, we're building what we see here. So I'm following along, following along with the image. Uh -oh. That's me. Uh, and don't forget to buy some rubber pads for the base of this printer. There are already some holes in the frame. Good to know, okay. I saw, I did see the holes in the bottom of this and I was wondering if they included something or not. 
Is there, I can't remember, no. I printed out some TPU feet recently. The two missing parts are two skinny rails with one. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, uh, I should have just counted from the beginning. I just wasn't sure if that image had included the missing parts or if it was, you know, not including them. It looks like the, that image doesn't, does not include the parts we're not supposed to install right now. I think I see the skinny pieces you're talking about. It must be these, these guys right here in the back. Uh, just butt it on a big foam slab. <laughs> hey, what's up, Zen? All right. <laughs> the cue to go to our 8-bit music. Uh, I love seeing builds like this. It gets my brain working to think about what it would take to make this with easily sourced parts. Yeah, it would it would be very difficult to replicate this. I mean, drilling out the holes maybe not so much, but I don't like bending bending the metal <laughs> and and the welds. There's Again, there's little welds on the bottom pieces. I, uh, <laughs> it would definitely be a tough, um, you know, as part of the instructions, like skills required welding. <laughs> but I think it's, I still think it's awesome. Like, I mean, I am, I'm sure that part of having the steel frame will make it where certain aspects of it will be <laughs> way tougher to upgrade versus, you know, like something like the Voron where new part comes out, you just reprint everything. However, I also imagine it means that it will probably last a lot longer. Um, you know, the, there's no, the electronics at least aren't proprietary, so all that stuff you could swap out. Um, but I don't really see this stuff wearing down per se. But I just liked, you know, again with, like right now, the last year, like, you know, Vorons have been kind of the primary kit printers that most people have been wanting to build, and I absolutely get why, and I still want to build quite a few other variants, uh, along with Rat Rig. But I just, I like that this is so different than really anything else I've seen. It's not, it doesn't seem like it's trying to be anything other than a just tanky, tanky printer, um, which I am all, I am all on board with. Uh, peak, ouch. Yeah, peak is nuts. Uh, if you had a metal heat uh, heat break, you'd be able to make those at home. Wait, what do you mean? You'd be able to make those at home. I think theoretically, if the XY motion system 3D printing uses high helix lead screws, the 3D printing could be a lot faster and more accurate. How, my question is with lead screws though is, and you said for XY, is like how, quick can they move like i mostly see lead screws used for motion on like i think um oh what's the company nero nero interviewed them in detroit they're a canadian company and they make like the most monstrous core xy and i think they use ball screws but my question is like belts can move a gantry quite quickly most of the time i see lead screws used for motion or ball screws it's mostly in cnc world can is there motors that can move them quick enough that they would be able to keep up with a belt-driven system? Uh, high helix lead screws are different. Okay, gotcha. Maybe I just don't know. I haven't seen them or can't picture them, so I just don't know. Oh, metal brake. It's a tool. Oh, okay. My brain instantly goes to <laughs> 3D, 3D printing, so I was like, heat brake, what? Gotcha. Uh, it's very coarse, like the uh, the pitch is higher. Interesting. I always learn new things in the streams. It, it's very cool. Pantheon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Pantheon, I believe, uses ball screws. Um, and I, if I remember, they're only supported on one side. The other, the other end of the ball screws are just kind of uh, like floating, essentially. But they're they're very 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 beefy ball screws. I think once this printer build's done, I'm gonna go around the entire thing with some sort of like alcohol to clean off some of the adhesive from the um, from the saran wrap or this coating. It's leaving 
certain areas are leaving like little bits of adhesive. Mostly where it curves, um, where it's not tearing off super clean. Oof. pick and place machines move quite fast. I don't think I've ever seen... I, I'm sure I've seen videos of watching pick and place machines maybe using them and just never noticed it. The primary pick and place I can think of is the open... I think it's open source, maybe not. Um, the one that was at Murph. Uh, it's like a thousand bucks, uses extrusions, 3D printed parts, and uh, I know that's belt driven, but again, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about a more industrial pick and place machine. All right, let's put these on the side. So let me scoop. Ooh, that's not a not a super pleasant sound. Let's stack these guys like that. Okay. Ooh, all right. I should, don't slide it. Hey, what's up, John? Uh, you should definitely use. Uh, wait, you should also use grease on the screws if they are also stainless they can get stuck and snap huh uh all good i like to go to bed but it's only 4 12 man hold out till at least seven lisa <laughs> otherwise you'll wake up and it'll suck there's been quite a few times where i've right, just let me know let me know if camera angle is okay for right now guys I, I feel like this is probably cool for this frame part but i can move you guys around a little bit if you if need be uh, where did I put... Oh, there. Angle is great. Okay, cool. I figured, I figured it was probably fine, but just wanted to ask. Once I have it on the big screen, when the big screen comes in, it'll be easier for me to be like, yeah, that doesn't look very good for everybody. Okay, so what's the easiest part for me to get those these nuts inside here? Um, hmm, interesting. Um, I wonder if that's what those slits are for, so that way you can kind of fit things in. You guys are just gonna see arm for a second here. Angle, <laughs> angle is gonna go from great to not so great for a minute here. I wonder if it'll be easier for me to pop the screw out like that. Yeah, these corner bolts are going to be a little bit tough to reach. There we go. Just do like one turn. I feel like I should be using tweezers for this. Um, I think, where did I get the tweezers we used last week? It's just pretty small. The corners are not really fun to try to get your fingers into. Um, tweezers. Oh yeah. These will be way nicer. <laughs> Use tweezers. Use tweezers and line up the screw correctly. All right, I am failing here pretty epically. There we go. <clears throat> Uh, 
Uh, sorry if it's already been talked about. What hot next shooter? Yeah, it's a it's clone. Um, the with it being a stainless steel frame, I'm surprised the holes aren't tapped. Yeah, I it would definitely simplify things a bit versus using lock notes. Um, I wonder if it's to prevent stripping because it's not incredibly thick. I don't know. I I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, it's a the. If you go with the one that's included with it, then it's a BMG and a Volcano clone. However, uh, they do sell it also without, they do sell it without a pod and an extruder if you just want to source your own. I have a feeling that long term that's what we'll end up doing is putting something else on it, but um, since this is what's included with the sort of kit, if you go with their hot and extruder, I wanted to see Kind of just how it performs as is. Man. There has gotta be a better way. Um, I don't know what it is. But this, like the corner, corners are super tough to access. Yeah, I can't, um, let me see if I'm gonna have to use this. The good thing is you only have to build the frame once. <laughs> uh, I have a larger tank and replaced with the LGX in Rapido. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I have a feeling that I will probably do something very similar to that. I, I have quite a few different extruders and hot ends sort of sitting around here that I've been I don't know what I've been doing with them, but just sitting on them, not doing anything with them. So yeah, I have a feeling I'll end up swapping it as well. Um, so we'll see. I, I, if they, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't know, Never mind. <laughs> I think again, it's one of those things with it being a pretty small company that they're Options are kind of limited and they're trying to sort of keep costs down as well because they could I'm sure they could very well offer like an LGX um, LGX or LGX Lite option and charge, you know an extra Whatever cost is for it uh, But instead they sort of have it set up where you know, you kind of source the configuration you want Okay, those are in but loose as well, which is what we want Going over to this guy Probably not thick enough sheet metal for tapping. Uh, you should have at least, you should have a thread length of minimum one times the screw diameter. Gotcha. Yeah, it probably is not thick enough then. Do I have my calipers? I can, um, let me see. Are my calipers? It's like, it's always like a booby trap in here when I'm streaming. Ah. Um, yeah, I'm a caliper, so let's measure the thickness. It looks like it's maybe... Oops. <laughs> Just kicking everything as I go. So it's basically two mil thick. Yeah, definitely not thick enough. Uh, that That's the reason why then. Because we're using M4 screws, and if we follow the rule of it needs to be at least one times the width then it needs to be twice as thick. Man, if the frame was twice as thick, I could just imagine, I could just imagine the weight on this thing. All right, the screw's going in. Uh, press nets would work, but it takes a lot of time. Uh, I'm not familiar with this printer, but by looking at photos, it looks like they spent a lot of time on the frame, but the rest has been just thrown together. Mm, I don't know if I would say that. There's a lot of things that I saw that looked pretty awesome. I think the only thing that, to me, kind of feels a little bit like a, um... I don't even know if I want to say afterthought, but let's just use that word for right now. It is the, the sort of hotted and extruder setup.
Okay, that's loosely in. Yeah, definitely tweezers are there. Tweezers for the win here. Just to at least get things ah, just to at least get things started. is great as well only the tool head is a bit of a mess like it has the breezer or at least uh, at least partly addresses it is the breezer the their sort of cooling setup because the where is that part yeah this is the um, tool head for at least the stock setup Please check the uh, please check the alternative tool head in the wiki. Where oh oh interesting. No, this is is this what I'm printing or is this what I have? This looks similar to what I have in front of me. The all touch version, duck mounts. Okay, so here's the cube. The all touch version. Uh, sadly, I'm going to have to go into head in the office. We have people from our Paris office. Oh, wow. No worries. Well, thanks for stopping by, John. Hope everything goes, uh, goes well at the office. Oh, wow. That's wild. Uh, the printed parts, Pi, are in Polymaker, Polylight, ASA, uh, and the color is Army Green. That's crazy. Um... That's not stock. Yeah, no worries, Pi. Uh, that's not stock though, right? This looks like it's like an after market. That's nuts. Um, it's pretty freaking cool. Or is that stock? That can't be stock. I don't think I printed the parts for that. Uh, at some point last year, I used parts to repair my image temporarily. Oh, you guys. Man, you guys aren't looking. No, sorry, everyone. <laughs> I, I thought this whole time we were looking at the same thing. Okay, so breezer. Um, scrolling down, scrolling down. There's the normal blower, and there's this insane high power blower, um, and it uses a tube to basically feed the air. Um, from its mounting point, which is at the bottom corner here. It's crazy looking. Um, it's pretty freaking cool. Again, just different than what I've seen. Ah, oh. <laughs> we had 69 likes. That's funny. At the bottom, you can see my printer. Okay, cool. So this is your, your Zen. That's awesome. Uh, that's a CPAP style setup. Interesting. That's cool. <clears throat> 73 likes. Goal is 100. If you have not hit the like button, please do. It takes one second and I uh, really appreciate it. Okay, let's go ahead. So we've got two installed here. We've got two more screws on this end. Then we'll do the back side. Um, is this? Hmm. It does looks looks like it might be tricky to get that aligned. Um, Maybe if I loosen these guys. Yep, 
interesting. These guys don't seem very well aligned. Okay, there we go. Just need to loosen. Just need to loosen a little bit. Uh, I decided to just do the Delta Blower because the CPAP one needs a separate controller and you can only run it at like 25% of the rice. It's just too much cooling. Gotcha. Uh, I use a 7035 that moves quite some air through that too. Are you guys both running cubes or what, um, what version of second are you running? Come on, buddy. <laughs> Why are you not? Uh... Yeah, a lot of steel asker. This guy is being a jerk. He wants to line up so bad, I can feel it. All right, maybe I need to loosen these guys more. I think the bottom one is the one that's... Ugh. Okay. Music cutting out? It's cutting out for me. Uh, I'd love to run one on something just because it's super neat, but I don't need it and don't want to deal with the noise and extra controller and all that. How loud? Is it? Is it insanely loud? There we go. There we go. Yeah, yeah, we can do it. I guess, I think this side holes are a little bit closer. Um, and I also think maybe I tightened them a little bit too much. Come on, man. <laughs> All right. Some of these, um, some of these nuts are a little bit tricky to get in. Okay. These are all... Beta cubes, so, okay, so cube, gotcha. Okay, still quite loose, but again, it's on and it says, it says that we wanna leave it loose until all the parts are on and then kind of tighten them together. So that is exactly what we're going to do. Um, where did I do? There we go. Okay, so let's point at the same orientation like that uh, and then we are going to do the one with the outlet goes on the back right like that quick little quick little coke break Holy crap, have we really been, um, have it really been an hour and a half already? Well, let's, um, wait, am I wrong? Has it been half an hour? No, it's been an hour and a half. Oh my, wow. Uh, Matthew, 
Uh, thank you very much for becoming a member. Welcome. Um, that's crazy. I feel like it's gone by insanely fast. Uh, we're going to open our giveaway up then. Uh, we do our weekly Polymaker giveaway. Uh, it's one spool of Polymaker filament, PLA, ABS, PETG, or ASA, and the shipping is global. Um, so I'm going to, let's see here, copy link, shorten URL, copy and paste. All right, so I just posted the link in chat. Uh, I'm gonna pin it so it'll move in a second here. And then in half an hour, we will draw a winner. And then winner, I will contact via email and get you the form so Polymaker can ship out your filament. Uh, taking the frame out over the side of the bench, is it not an easy way to mount the frame? Um, if you go out the side of the bench, yeah, it probably is a bit easier. It's still tough though, um, because on the bottom they've got these, I didn't even take this piece off, uh, because the bottom has these corners built into them, you still have to wrap your fingers like around them and get it aligned, but it's probably a little bit easier, yeah. Using the um, using the tweezers seems to be working pretty well. But yeah, the corners are just a little bit tough. If it didn't have these bottom pieces on them, it'd be easier, but I'm assuming they need them for either stability or again, so you can mount, mount the feet on them. <clears throat> we could try it that way though, on this one. Um, let's go like this, back corner this let's see um, interesting so this one has more bolts on it I guess back one has three on one side and two on the other versus two and two well this one this first one should be fairly easy why is the, the music is tripping me out uh, I just want the thrill of one, of winning. Oh, just want the thrill of winning. Yeah, you can get the uh, you can get the Polymaker ASA that I used for the printed parts on this. Okay, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe uh, two, okay. So two, one of the holes appears to be smaller. So I'm not. I'm gonna leave that one as is for now. Um, let me see if I switch. Okay. I'm switching headphones to see if it does anything. Uh, you can turn it on your side. Hey, I'm Canadian. Cool. Uh, welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe we can turn it on its side. I mean, they're still loose. Let me get this first one in um, and see. Yeah, having access to the bottom by turning it on its side definitely might make things a bit easier. Yeah, this is this is incredibly awkward. Uh, let's try this side, see if it'll work. Since right now we're just getting things in place, it shouldn't matter. Okay, I think I like this way better. This may be the way, turning it on its side. Um, Yeah, side might be the win. Uh, so if you get two of them on, I guess you can just flip it and it at least makes it easier to sort of see what's going on. <clears throat> uh, I'm Canadian, I have one, uh, they ship in Canada, so no import fees, shipping or duty. Oh, cool. Oh, is that what you were saying? Like you're in Canada, so it's complicated. Uh, Canada, I've discovered, uh, seems much stricter than the US when it comes to import fees. Like, um, I was talking to well, a couple of people um, that do like print reviews and stuff like that, and it just seems like if the documentation is not exactly correct, that the the fees are pretty insane. Uh, and I, I've, knock on wood, it's not been something I've experienced at least. I'm sure it does happen in the States as well, uh, but it just seems like Canada is really strict about uh, import duties.
Mm -mm. I know Nero's, uh, Nero's personally had to deal with it a couple of times. Oh man, this top one sucks. We're still gonna, still gonna use tweezers for this top one. The very corner one is just very awkward. And the other nut that we've already put in there kind of makes it even tougher to, to get it in there. Oh my gosh, we got, we got spam calling again. Okay. Let's do a couple turns so that way it's not gonna fall out like that. A couple of turns on this guy. Like that. All right, and then let's do the last corner. Yeah, side for the win. That was, I think, the winning ticket. Yeah, grubby mates need their money. Okay, and this guy, same thing. I think it'll be easier like this. Oop. Definitely be careful when you install the first one because the steel steel does not want to hang out up top. <laughs> was it last year? Yeah, it was last stream where gravity was working against us. It's the same thing here. So using my forearm to hold this in place. And once we get that in, we should be okay to let it hang. Yeah, that last corner one, there's just, unless I back the screw out, so that way it's, the thread's not in the way. Let's see if I can do it this way. Yeah, that might work. Yeah, if you take it out completely, then I guess I could line it up like that. Still kinda, still kinda sucks. Ah, it's not too bad. <laughs> Uh, what was the single spool dryer you recommended again? Uh, single spool dryer I recommended is going to be the Ease Dry uh, by Ebus. Ebus Ease Dry. It works really, really well. Uh, folded uh, gravity is always pulling something specifically. Oh gosh, don't even get me started. <laughs> and screws on the floor. Uh, printer bot. Oh, the printer bot. Uh, printer bot simple metal or pr yeah. I never got a printer bot. The first printer was the DaVinci 1.0 back in 2014. And then I think I went straight into the Fulgurtech 2020. Um, I think the printer bot was a little bit outside of my budget. Um, back then, 2014, I would have been out of high school for four years. I was either... Delilah. I was either unemployed um, or working for myself. Um, like my first job after high school was working at McDonald's. I was 17, I needed a job, I was going to community college. And my parents said that I had to, they said either go to school full time or work full time or both part time or something along those lines. And I think I ended up trying to do both full time and I just, I, I'm not very good at multitasking. I never have been and it, it did not go well. It started off okay then sort of flopped. And then um, that's when I started making YouTube videos was, I think when I was working at McDonald's, I was 18 is when I started making YouTube videos. So it's been like 12 years, but not consistently. Um, and I never had a plan of like making a channel. It was just sort of, I got really into video game 
uh, repairing consoles and hacking consoles. And so I started making videos and that was my full-time job for like a year to two years was just, I was working off primarily Craigslist, just buying broken consoles, reflowing them, modding them. Uh, and that was way more fun than working at McDonald's. Um, but yeah, when I, when I got my first 3d printer, like I, I think I was working at pet smarter for myself. And so the printer bot, ugh, the printer bot, I think was around a thousand bucks and it was just, it was out of my budget. Uh, wait, eBus resells that very cheap orange 3d printer. Huh? I haven't seen any 3d printer from them. Uh, yeah. Printer bot simple metal was the first auto leveling machine I got. I can picture what it looks like when I went, when I worked at matter hackers, they had one or two of them around the office. Cause I think they resold them back in the day. Do you think mini robot arm 3d printer would be the future? You mean like a, like a, um, assembly arm or whatever, like the, yeah, I guess robotic arms. I don't think so. I mean, I would imagine, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think there'd be cool things about it. Red ring of death. Yeah. That was one of the big ones. Red ring of death, JTAG flashing disc drives, uh, reset glitch hack. It was mostly Xbox is kind of what I was doing. And then because of that, I befriended someone from a Chinese company. And then we started, uh, like, well, it was technically his company, but it was him and me. And we were shipping like mod chips and stuff like that. And that was super fun as like a 19 year old or 20 year old back then. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Raj. Uh, I think that sounds like it'd be super expensive and, uh, the, autofocus is tripping uh, and I'm sure there'd be some limitations that I'm not really thinking of as far as the space it would need to operate plus like danger I guess if you will um, like typically 3d printers are contained within a set cube or bed area while an arm would have 360 degrees of rotation and if if the software isn't really good or you don't program it correctly I could see that like being potentially dangerous as well um, let's see uh, if you have not entered into the giveaway, it looks like there's 40 entries and 74 people uh, in stream. Definitely do so. It's pinned in chat. There's 17 minutes left till we draw a winner. And it's, it's for a spool of filament anywhere in the world, which is pretty cool from Polymaker. Yeah, Alien got the Ebus Ease Dry, and it's, it's a really awesome, uh, really awesome dryer. Okay, so we have done those. I think the next thing is probably uh top top beams are what we're gonna do next and i think for that uh using trying to work with gravity i'm wondering if it's going to be easier for us to flip it so instead of attaching it in the air maybe not maybe it'll be easier to hold let's let's try it like this um let's see uh, robot arm could print reverse overhangs uh, 14 more likes to 100. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna. We'll just go. We'll go full screen on me so that way it's not tripping out. And then I'm just gonna peel these really quick here. Definitely. I mean, uh, really unique looking as far as the frame goes with these big metal pieces. I wish this blue cover stuff came off a little bit easier. I mean, it was clearly on when they did the bending of the corner pieces. And because of that, it just is a little bit difficult to get off. Yeah, I, I, um, I mean, <laughs> I guess shaking it right now is not a fair example because again, all the screws are loose on it. But I, I think that this is going to be the sturdiest printer I've ever had my hands on or seen. Like it, it, it's just nuts. <laughs> I mean, the like, you know, it, it almost feels like the like because the rat rig that we just built, the B Minion, is also very sturdy, but it's a cantilever design. It almost feels like that, but in a Core XY form. Um, I'm only talking about the sturdiness of it, not, and nothing else translates over from rat rig to this. It's very, very, very different. 
<clears throat> I like the sprinter so far. Do you, do you have one, Christian? Or you mean just from the build, from what you're seeing? Assembling the frame um, is relatively simple. I mean, again, other than just getting your hands into small places, but I, it's it's been smooth. Uh, I was concerned initially that this image would be a little bit confusing, but it seems like the the angle uh, that of the image, the angle of the photo they took for this CAD makes it easy enough to see where all the mounting holes are and so you make sure you have the right pieces. The metal is not polished, so not too bad with fingerprints. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, you can see the fingerprints for sure, um, but it could be a lot worse, like you said, if it was polished. Once it's once this build's done, I'll give it a nice, a nice little cleanup. We'll wipe it down with some IPA and all that. Uh, the basic construction seems very solid. Yeah, I, I agree. We'll have to, we'll have to go kind of ham with this printer. And uh, I mean, for the review, I might not go insane, but like, we need to have a stream where we just like max out print speed on it because of how rigid this thing is. And the fact that we're probably going to be replacing the extruder in hot end. Um, it would be fun to just sort of push it to its limits because of how rigid the frame is to see what it can, what it can output. Uh, the plastic can be a bit tedious to peel off afterwards, but it is good for protecting ends when you bend blanks. Gotcha. Yeah, I I, um, I anticipate they left it on for the, a reason, you know, to protect it. And I haven't done any... Um, I have never done any metal fab work and like that, so I won't pretend to know. But that makes sense that it, again, just protects it from... Likely, I would imagine, scratching from the machine that's bending it. Although a buddy of mine did have, I think it was a pipe bender in his garage, and I don't remember, he did a lot of car stuff, and I think it was, um, and this was, this was probably like eight years ago, but I think he was making like roll cages and stuff like that, and so he had a machine that was bending metal pipe. Although I don't really remember very, I don't really remember how it worked, um, to be honest with you. Uh, this is probably a very reliable machine. I hope so. <laughs> I would. I hope so. I'd love for that to be the case. Okay, so let me look at. So, two. Two. Two two. Okay, so these are all definitely the four top pieces. Uh, looks like the front piece. Are these are the same. Okay, so these are the same. So what is the difference between these? One is a slot, um, which is gonna be a little bit confusing because I don't see a slot on any of those. Hey, what's up, Ravenous? Um, yeah, so one of them has this slot, uh, like that. And I don't see that pictured. Uh, I don't see that pictured in any of these. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure where that goes, or if that, yeah. Uh, okay, this looks, this looks right. This looks like it is going to be the front piece. So let's do this one first. There's a very, Looks like uh, 10 more minutes on the giveaway if you have not entered in and then we will we will draw. So it looks like this guy goes right here. These line up, that looks good. Should be two holes on top, yeah. So let's do this one first. Let's grab, oops, throwing nuts. Let's grab nuts, let's grab screws. One, two, three, and four. Okay, and this guy is going on the inside, so... Okay, 
Interesting, there's a gap. Hmm. Um, that doesn't seem right. Unless, unless, it could be like, uh, side profile. So this one looks like it is the side one. Um, no, that might be right. Yeah, that, that probably is right. Okay. All right, got that guy loosely in. Let's get the other side so that way I don't have to hold it in the air like that. Okay. Uh, the pipe bender prob, probably. Are you, are you talking about the tool? It's been so long. I just I just remember him having the tool. I can't remember. He had a ton of car stuff. Like he was he had a BMW that was like his like n nice car, and then he had a um, Miata that was his project car, and he had another car as well. He's definitely the car guy out of my group of friends in high school. I know and I knew and know very little about cars. Um, I've done like my own oil changes. Uh, when I had a truck at one point that took a crap, I, I, he helped me and we changed like spark plugs, um, cleaned out the like, uh, mass or the sensor, mass, mass airflow sensor, I think is what it's called. But I'm, I'm definitely not a car guy. I didn't grow up around, I didn't grow up around any like car people really. Okay, let's spin this around and do the back side. Um, I'm actually trying to see if I can figure out, these look to me, okay, yeah, I've got it figured out. The one with the slot has to go on the back. It's the only one, it's the only one that can. So let's spin this guy around like that, and then we will basically rinse and repeat. Uh, the pipe bender most likely works with a hydraulic jack. Maybe, yeah, that might have been, that might have been it. Uh, good thing you don't have to deal with those hammer, oh my god, the hammerhead nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, again, different than how some of the builds have been lately. Was it the rat, no, what, oh yeah. It, the rat rig enclosure was pretty brutal to put together. I've got my video coming up on the rat rig um, via Minion pretty soon here on the main channel. Probably a couple weeks out now. Overall, I really like the V Minion. I think it's an awesome, by far the best cantilever printer I've ever used um, in terms of just tankiness and um, another spam call. Love it. Uh, as far as tankiness and just like, it's an awesome machine. It, it's printed really well. I printed out the majority of the um, Vector finesse headphone uh, parts and PTG on it, and I've printed quite a few PLA parts on it as well. Uh, my really my biggest gripe is, which was pretty apparent in the um, in the build we did on stream, was the electronics are just feel like an afterthought. Like there just needs a little bit more, a little more TLC in their um, in the wiring in the wiring process of things, both in the instructions and sort of the way that they have it all set up. I did get in the, um, I did get in the PCB breakout board uh, from V3D for it. So we'll probably end up doing a video stream at some point where we'll upgrade the V Minion, the wiring on it, as well as the tool head to the, to the latest um, uh, Eva, Eva tool head or e Eva uh, I'm talking about the V Minion zombie. It's just, it's a monster cantilever. There's no denying it. Uh, yeah, yep, yep. I would say the 
best if you're planning on doing a ton of modding is the KP3S. I'm the, honestly, like after now using quite a few cantilevers, I am not all that crazy about the Prusa Mini. Like, I think it's okay. I, I don't think it's a bad printer. Um, but the KP3S is a better printer for modding, in my opinion, than the Prusa Mini. Like the Prusa Mini is kind of like just a set and leave it as is. And then if you want to get a decked out, uh, cantilever, I'd go with the Rat Rig V Mini, and so the Prusa Mini is kind of like in the middle. I still think, again, I, I'm not saying it's a bad cantilever by any means, but I just, I don't feel, I don't think I'll be using it very much. Um, I'll, I'll use probably primarily the Rat Rig and the KB3S. Granted, them both having Clipper, if the, if the Prusa Mini had Clipper on it, I probably would use it a bit more, um, but just kind of currently. Is the back piece on the wrong side? Is the back piece on the wrong side of the vertical ones? I don't think so. Which back piece? Everything looks right. Um, so like the angled pieces, we've got, that looks right, fan on the bottom. These are both right with the logos on it. Uh, top piece looks fine, it's solid. No, I think we're good. Um, I think we're good. It could be the, could be the camera angle maybe, uh, the way I've got it. Okay, and then the last two side pieces are going to go with these, yes. Okay, all looks good, thank you. I appreciate the checking though, I mean, I've, there's been Plenty of time on stream where someone's been like, hey, I think you're doing that wrong. And I'm like, yep, you're absolutely right. I am, thank you, so. Yeah, for this part, maybe laying it down will be easier, but it's, I like versus having my hands down and going over to me is easier. So we'll leave it like this for now. Um, get some more nuts, get some more bolts. More. Use my forearm to keep it up. Hopefully not scratch the watch. There we go. Wait, um, wait, wrong side? Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean wrong side? They look the same. It looks right. The um, they're inside these, right? These these are the same exact pieces from what I can see, and these go on the inside of these parts. It looks correct. Oh crap! Uh, G funny. I I didn't even think about that. That um. Yeah, Fabrico's based out of Florida. I hope they're okay too. Oh, no worries. Uh, no worries, Jose. Have you talked to him today? Um, have you talked to him today, G Funny? I'll have to, I'll have to message him after the, uh, after the stream. All right, those are in. Pop this guy in like that. Okay, it is technically giveaway time. I am going to unpin, uh, I have his number, but it's at home, okay. I don't know if I have his cell number. Yeah, if you, if you hear from him, let me know. Uh, Gee, funny again, I, I completely blinked that yeah, he's in Florida, so hopefully he's okay. I don't know where, 
Exactly. Um, okay, I'm going to unpin the giveaway. Uh, I'm going to put on the last piece on this side and then we'll do the drawing. So last warning or last uh, heads up. Something's off here. What's off here? It looks fine to me. Oh, no, I think, I think I, uh, Creality Sonic Pad video is coming out on Saturday and that has my current thoughts on it. Okay, let's do the giveaway. I lied because I, I want to make sure everything is good here. Um, it looks right to me. Um, it looks correct to me. Check the holes on the side. Which holes? Which holes? There should be four holes for the magnets of the enclosure on each side. Okay, I will investigate. I'll investigate a bit further. Let's do the giveaway. Uh, and then I can focus on making sure the frame is uh, aligned here. So one second. Uh, let's see. All right, so 60 responses. Control C. And then uh, you can see the front holes are blocked. So maybe wrong side. Which holes for the magnets? Okay, I'll look at it. Um, yeah, I'll look at it in a moment. Wheel of names. Has it been long enough for me to enter again? Yes. Yes, we have no, except for like on the days where we do multiple giveaways, you are able to win. Uh, you are able to win a week after week if the odds are in your favor. Okay, that is a warm Coke. Let me get some water. All right, everybody. We are going to shuffle the names a little bit. And as always, I will contact the winner uh, later on today to give you the form. And uh, you can put in your spool that you won with Polymaker. Again, as always, massive thank you to Polymaker. They are an awesome company. They're super supportive of our community as well as a lot of other awesome communities out there. Um, and if you, and they make incredible material. I mean, I've been using Polymaker's filament for years. So if you're interested in trying out their filament, there is a link in the description where you can purchase and it does also support the channel and lets them know that we are sending uh, some people over their way. So let's go ahead and on that, on that note, let's go ahead and kick this off. Good luck, everybody. Three, two, one. <clears throat> hey, Sky Down. I don't think, have you won before Sky Down? I don't think so. Congratulations. I will uh, probably just message you on Discord um, or, or email you, but yeah, I'll. I'll or message me if you want. Just shoot me a message on Discord, and I will get you the uh, forms so that you can so that you can pick your spool. Congratulations! That's exciting. Let's go to Sony. Let's go to Confetti, and let's go to our clap. <laughs> Congratulations! That's awesome. <clears throat> All right, let's see here what I am doing wrong with this build. So um, let's see. The wiki is here. So let me look at, uh, okay, so this is the front of it. I'm assuming this is not, no, that's a tank. <laughs> that's like, that doesn't look right. Uh, where are we at? There we are. <clears throat> Wish there was a bigger image. Uh, we're meeting at the wrong time.
the piece I just mounted is on the other side. Gotcha. So, what we're saying is this guy is incorrect. And then it should be on the other side. It doesn't make sense. Oh. Yes, that does make sense. This is wrong. I think. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Because this should have like this, and then it matches the image where there's two holes and two holes. Okay. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Cool. Thank you. So that, that is, yep, it needs to be four holes on that side. Yep, that's it then. This needs to go. <clears throat> Good catch. Let's undo. I didn't even tighten these into the threads yet, so we'll just pop these off. What's happening? Oh, three. Okay. So this guy, you do not belong here. You go on that side, and you go on this side, like this. So now we have, wait a minute. Okay, there we go. So now there's two holes and two holes. There we go. All right, I'm gonna take these out so I don't drop them on the ground. Oh no, bots. Uh, also, it's late for me. Have a great stream and see you soon. Hey, thanks for stopping by. I mean, we're, the goal is to get through basically frame and maybe the um, pulley sets today. And then that'll probably be it until next Wednesday we're doing the headphone build. Um, so maybe the next Monday we'll do a build. Uh, I know I said every other Monday, but it might be just kind of like Mondays as we can. Wait, that is over there. There we go. Okay, that looks right. Two, two, and one, two, one, two, yes, right? That looks, that looks perfect, all right. Gonna use my forearm to hold this up. All right, now we can flip you around. Oh, it's, it's getting heavier to move. Like that. And then this should go like this. Yep. All right. Um, your mama is a wonderful lady. My mama is really sweet. <laughs> I think we ran out of nuts, which makes me think that, let's see. So I'll just cover, 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 second nut. Um, there is another, there we go. There's 40 more of them. Okay. 
This one's kind of being a jerk. Um, let's grab the wrench. All right, last two bolts for the top. I think we've only got two more pieces to put on the frame. Then we get to shake it, uh, and then we will tighten it all. Hey, what's up, Squirrel Brain? I don't feel like I've seen you in a while. Uh, time to sleep. Good night, everyone. Hey, thanks for hanging out, Christian. Have a great night's sleep. Uh, okay, so the last two that we need, it's gonna, they're going to be mounting to the back, so let's have that facing towards us, which is this side, and then... Okay, these are, uh, so it looks like, mm, no, that doesn't look right. Gonna, oh, this looks, hmm. <laughs> okay, so one of these, I think none of these look right. Uh, so one, two, three holes on the end in the center. Okay, this kind of looks right. I'm pretty sure this is one of the pieces. Neither of these have center pieces. These ones must go on later. And this just, this has to be the other piece. So there's three big holes. No, yeah, three big holes. Um, this has to be the piece. It looks kind of, it looks kind of off. Um, Also, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So this has to be the piece that goes here. Um, the only thing I'm not sure of is on the top of it. Um, hey, what's up, Brendan? How's it going? <clears throat> okay, so the thing I'm not certain of is Pretty sure I got this guy figured out right here, although what I see in front of me looks slightly different, which makes me wonder if there was a revision. Um, the thing I'm not certain of is on this part right here, the orientation it needs to go in. So it looks like they're showing two holes down here, then one, and then just one up here. But what I'm looking at in front of me is, hey, what's up, KB? Um, what I'm looking at in front of me is this. Uh, so there is, it looks like two, is that tapped? No, it's not. Um, two smaller holes, an M4, an M4 smaller hole, an M4 smaller hole. What I'm uncertain of though is again, just which direction this goes. It's kind of throwing me off. Um, hey, what's up, Telly? It is confusing me. Because I don't see either side that has these two holes right here. Uh, I'm surviving a cane that is hitting near... Oh man, you're in Florida? Oh, I hope you're safe, man. I hope you stay safe. Um, it's crazy. Like, I, I know I saw the last couple days like it being talked about, but I just... I thought... I don't know, man. I, I thought it was going to miss or like that it wasn't as big. And then it seemed like in the last 24 hours, it just went from like... Things are looking kind of crazy to like full-blown insanity. I haven't looked in the last couple hours since I've been streaming, but I was following this morning. I'm just like, man, it looks absolutely insane. So I hope you and your family are okay. Yeah, that's, it's just insane. Um, yeah, this part's driving me a little bit nuts, guys. I just don't know. Um, okay, so if this gets mounted like that, these parts basically look mirrored. Um, Okay, I'm thinking... Uh, I don't think there's a step file for this anywhere. 
I don't know if anyone that's built it's in chat. Is there a step file available for this? Because if there is, like, this is the one part right here in the back that's totally, I just, I don't know. I can't tell. Two holes. Yeah, this is not very... Um, I guess, let me see if I can find another image of it. Okay, so that, oh shit. That's a different printer, so that won't be good. Um, enclosure, let me see if I just find a different angle. Okay, here we go. No, that's the side profile. I can guess. <laughs> uh, it's a 50-50 shot that I'm right, or I have to remove it later on. Um, if there was a uh, none of these show shots at the back it'd be really cool if there was a gallery they're all front shots I feel like there's gotta be another image somewhere here that shows the back. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. That's, I think that will do. Um, so it looks like we need to have two holes left and right, and this is towards the top. So I'm thinking, all right. So looking at this, seeing that there's the two mounting holes, and then two more that go side by side. It looks like this is the correct orientation. So the side with two and the side with two need to go upright. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna install it like this. Um, that's about as, I mean, if we're wrong, we're wrong. And I, hopefully it won't be the worst to have to undo that if needed, but that seems to make sense to me. And that's what we're gonna stick with. The CAD drawing was easy to see all the other parts, but for some reason this one, it's possible that they changed up the mounting from the time that uh, that instruction was placed, but it just doesn't, it doesn't match up to me with what I'm seeing in front of me. Uh, I live a couple miles from the coast of Florida and the store shelves are all empty. Oh, you, like you mean just people prepping? Yeah, it's absolutely insane. I, I know that like, I think some people on the East Coast, uh, I don't live in California anymore, but I like, grew up in California, were like, you guys have earthquakes. And I'm like, man, I've lived here my whole life and I've never really had a scary moment with an earthquake. Well, on the East Coast, like there's just, seems like, you know, every couple of years, some insane thing. I, I just couldn't imagine. It's, it's terrifying. Like, I don't know, it's, I mean, looking at the images of it, I just can't even fathom it. Okay, so this guy's going like this. Um, let me get you guys a little bit further out. <laughs> you are, uh, you are late, alien, but better late than ever. <laughs> Ice storms? Okay, let's get some more bolts. We opened up a new bag of nuts, we need Four more bolts. I think we need more than four nuts, but we'll start with that. Okay, and then again, looking at the instructions under the frame, I believe this mounts on the outside. Yes, it has to. Uh, I think we're gonna flip this on its head to get easier access to it. Okay. 
<clears throat> All right. Still nice and loose. Uh, what do we got likewise? Oh, we hit 100! Yay! Hey, thank you guys! That's awesome! 101 likes. That's exciting. Okay, uh, so we got this guy on, and then the last piece is this guy for right now, which it doesn't look like the direction matters. Um, could I be wrong in saying that? Absolutely, but it just seems like it wedges, and it's, a, it's mirrored other than the bending direction, and it, it doesn't seem to give that info. Um, so I think we're just going to install it in either which way. Mm. Your likes means you're giving me a printer. Yes, that is exactly, that is exactly right. <laughs> but the rule is you have to, you have to get, well, a tattoo would be expensive. Let's see, you get a tattoo of a pineapple pizza. <laughs> Oh man, my stomach is growling. Dude, I said, uh, not sure if anybody asked before, but are you going to stand on the completed printer? Uh, we had a lot of questions earlier on. Um, it was not part of the plan, but as long as it's safe to do so, yes. It wasn't part of the original plan though. I'd seen it done, but if, if uh, <laughs> who am I to, who am I to say uh, no to, to what the people want? Oh, you need pineapple, uh, pineapple pizza for a printer? I never heard about this brand. Yeah, I, I had heard of them. Not, I hadn't heard a ton about them. I had seen them before on Teaching Tech's channel and Chris Riley's, uh, but I hadn't seen a ton. And it wasn't until they reached out where I started looking into this particular one. And the things I really liked was, as much as I like printed parts and think it's awesome and it goes well with things like the Voron and Rat Rig, this has very little printed parts. Um, the frame is steel, uh, three-point bed leveling with clipper, uh, that trams the bed, uh, actively heated chamber, closed loop stepper motors. Uh, it had some pretty awesome features. And so um, I just think that probably part of it is that they haven't had a lot of marketing uh, and that there's just not a lot of people. Like I, I know YouTube is not the only way people get information about new 3D printers, but like there just hasn't been a lot of coverage on YouTube, which is definitely a, a spot. Uh, Magoji Pizza and I'm Italian. <laughs> Damiano. Uh, my go-to pizza when I want the whole thing to myself is artichoke, black olive, and pineapple. Yeah, I could see that offending a lot of people. I would be there cheersing pizzas, and I would definitely eat uh, eat that pizza. Okay, um, going back to the guide. So yes, this goes on the inside of the frame, which helps to hold it in place. Like, wait, no, 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 am I goofing? Yes, I'm absolutely goofing. This needs to go way down here like that. Cool. Okay. So we will install this last piece and then we're basically going to be tightening all the bolts on the frame and then working on the pulleys. Okay, I need four more nuts and four more bolts. Two, three, and four. Dun, 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 dun. Wow. You, you can't go wrong with just a classic pepperoni pizza, Jose. I will admit, um, like I like really, like there's a couple pizza places around here um, that I have just sort of fallen in love with over the last couple months. And I mean, we'll get anything from like, this place has insane barbecue pizza to another one that's like pepperoni with some fresh veggies like mushrooms, bell peppers and jalapenos and garlic. Um, but then there's times where like, I just want a good pepperoni pizza. Um, and sometimes like I like healthier, you know, pizzas, um, which you know, healthy and pizza are kind of conflicting, but like, you know, healthier pizza. Um, and then there's other times where I just want like the greasiest pepperoni pizza that exists. So there's a, there's a lot of different, uh, I don't really discriminate when it comes to pizzas, man. Like I, I, I'm a uh, pizza appreciator for sure. All right, so I'm not tightening these, I'm just basically doing them, uh, doing a single thread into the lock nut to hopefully prevent them from popping out on me because I'd rather not do this twice. All right, I'm 
it should be fine. And then last two bolts are going into here, into here. What a crazy looking frame, guys. <laughs> it's just like looking at this and I mean, man, I, I've built, I've built so many, like tons of printers over the years. Like I'm not saying full kits, tons of them, but like just printers in general. And I, I've never assembled a printer that's even remotely like this, which is crazy to say with just again, you know, how long, like I, I've like, been 3D printing since 2014, prior to even doing like YouTube reviews and stuff, I was buying a lot of 3D printers and it, it just never, never anything like this. It's wild looking. It's fun, right? It's, it's fun, it's just different. <laughs> just like pizzas, don't discriminate against 3D printers. There's a lot of different, a lot of different 3D printers out there and all different. Okay. Uh, don't forget to check the squareness of the frame being fully tightened uh, before fully tightening the bolts. Yeah, it looks like barbecue never tried it. I have to travel the state to try that. Yeah, um, uh, barbecue chicken pizza I'm super hit or miss with. I, normally I'm like, yeah, maybe like once a, once a year. But there's a place locally that Erin found and she is not a barbecue chicken pizza one. Her coworker brought it in and she's like, dude, it was insane. And so she went out with one of her girlfriends a few weeks ago and I was like, I'm just here working on video stuff. I'm gonna get a large pizza for myself. I mean, it wasn't just for myself, but I'm gonna get a large pizza. And so I got that pizza and like, oh my God, it's uh, it's got like tons of fresh tomatoes and green onion on it and the chicken's great. And it's like a sweet, almost brown sugary barbecue sauce. And it's just, oh, so good, man. Um, so with the frame, it looks like it wants us to, yeah, all depends on the sauce. Uh, some call me a vanilla, but nothing better than a plain cheese. Plain cheese, uh, I can do plain cheese. I just find it boring. I, I really like a little bit of peps. Tightening ball bolts on frame, then sit on it, then pulley. If I hurt myself uh, sitting on a printer frame and, and, and I called Aaron and said, hey, like, I you know, just want to let you know I'm you know, bleeding out of my arm and she asked what happened. If I tell her I sat on a printer frame for chat, she would not be impressed. Tomato sauce only. You guys are wild. <laughs> you guys are wild. Okay, so it looks like... Uh, is the guy... Auto tramming. Wait, I find okay. So we have to shake it. It's part of it. All right. <laughs> it's been shook. My wife likes tomato sauce only too. How great. Well, I guess, you know what? I I can't say no because like we've had tomato sauce only like marguerite pizzas with basil and tomato and a couple of things. It can be pretty good. Uh, so yeah, it, I, it just, it sounded, when I said it out, when you said it out loud, it sounded wild. You're saying, wait, this looks light? This is not light. This is very heavy. If it looks light, I did work out once in the last month. So it could be that, but this is not a light frame. Very, very heavy frame. Uh, okay, so we're good on that. Loctite is optional. Is the crossbar on the outside or inside? Uh, oh shoot, I screwed up. I screwed up. I think that's because I was talking. This is supposed to be, this is supposed to be on the inside. It's, so this is in the back of it and this is, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Oh my God. Jose, you saved me twice today. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, you are correct. I goofed. That's what happens when I talk. I can't multitask to save my life. Uh, got so, so excited about pizza talk. Yeah, this needs to go on the inside. That will make a big difference. Luckily, it should be a fairly easy fix. And you guys, I'm so, I've got, I'm gonna have some chill mix in a second here. I was getting hungry, but like, just now I'm dreaming about pizza, but what's new, I guess. Okay, well, that sucks. I kind of have to, ooh, I have to take off these bolts too. 
at least one of them so I can pivot this a bit more. Okay. No, you still can't do it, dude. I think I can. This is, there we go. There we go. All right. So yeah, this crossbar is on the outside, but this crossbar is on the inside. And that I did not do. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, gold star. God damn it. I need to get gold stars for chat. I don't know how I want to implement it, but we need a wall of gold stars. Like, maybe, because there's there's no denying I screw up plenty of times when doing builds on stream. It would be kind of funny to have, like, a, like, a save of the month or something like that. <laughs> like, for whoever saved me from uh, some sort of error because I'm talking or just not paying attention or whatever. That'd be kind of funny. I don't know how I want to do that, but I like the the idea in my head makes me smile. Okay. Last bolt. Okay, then let me do a quick little tighten on these guys. Not really tighten them, but um, again, just so they don't fall out. Take one spin. Two spins. Okay, back where we were. Sub crust is so underrated. Oh god, you guys are killing me. Um, yeah, it's it's time for a granola bar here for a sec. Okay, so if the nuts are not fastened in stages, the torque might pull your frame out of square. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, what's my take on sub crust pizza? Um. I don't get it very often and I don't fully think it's necessary on like a good pizza, like a non fast food pizza. I, I like a good crust, like especially if you got a little bit of garlic on the crust. Ooh. Um, but I mean, it can be delicious too. I don't think I just, I don't think it's necessary. Also, I don't know if I told you guys last week's stream ended and I said I was going to make lasagna and that it only said it was like a 30 minute prep. I was making lasagna. Stream ended, I chilled for about half an hour. It was a five hour stream. So one o'clock my time till six o'clock my time. I chilled for half an hour and I was working on lasagna till 10 o'clock. It was insane. The serving size was for 14 people. So I had lasagna at 10 o'clock. <clears throat> Me and Aaron had lasagna for lunch the next day. <clears throat> I'm dying. <laughs> we had lasagna for dinner and then I froze about six servings of lasagna. <laughs> it was insane. I was dead when I was done from the stream making lasagna, but oh man, it turned out so good. <clears throat> the frame the frame still needs to be tightened um alex so that's what you're saying none of the bolts have been tightened yet it tells you to um it tells you to loosely uh fit all of them before you tighten them <laughs> my garfield Mm -mm. But I do love pizza and lasagna. This is the first time I think I've ever made lasagna. It turned out incredible. Hey, what's up, Steve? Everybody say hi, Steve. <clears throat> ah. How do I like the thickness of the pizza crust? It just depends, man. Um, when me and Aaron first started dating, I was working at a sports bar and uh, pizzeria and it was Italian. And so they had the deep dish like pies and they also had thin crust, like real, real thin crust. And I, I love both. It just depends um, kind of on your mood or what you're craving, but I, I like both. Thin or thick crust is, is 
all good with me. Medium crust, doesn't matter. Yeah, I was on it. So the thing that threw me off was I saw prep time 20, 30 minutes, right? And so I knew it was gonna take double that. Prep time on online recipes, like, I mean, let's just, let's take a quick break here. Um, prep time on online recipes must be done by like wizards because there's never been an accurate time where it's like prep time 10 minutes. I'm like, cool, if I'm an octopus and I can cut all these things in one go. Um, I was under the impression that once I did the prep, I'd put the lasagna in and just let it bake for two hours, but I didn't read far enough down the recipe. And it has you cook it uh, very, very slowly, like a bro broil, broil, no. I don't know what the word is, but like very light cook it for, it was like an hour and a half or two hours in a Dutch oven. And it says to just stir occasionally. So I was like, cool, I'll stir it every 10 minutes. It was burning and popping. So I had to stir it. Me and Aaron, think, thankfully, tag teamed it. Every five minutes, we could hear it popping again. And so we had to stir it. And then the layering instructions didn't make any sense. So I was layering it all, but it turned out great in the end. It just, it was not what I anticipated, which was an hour of prep. And then two hours later, reading was on it. It was an hour of prep, an hour and a half of stirring, layering for 15 to 20 minutes, baking it, and then waiting for it to cool and then eating it. It was just, it's such a long thing. Very, 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 very long thing. <clears throat> it's uh, it's like assembly time for printers. It takes me longer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I was mentally prepared for the um, amount of time and work it took. But the fact that it turned out as good as it did. I mean, Erin texted me and she's not even a big lasagna person at work the next day. I was like, dude, this lasagna is bomb. So... It was all worth it in the end, but man, it was just, last Wednesday was brutal. <laughs> okay. So, something I find a little bit interesting about the instructions is then again, they want you to hold the bolt steady and they want you to tighten it with the nut. And because of the orientation of this, it's not gonna be fun tightening this frame. It's going to be rough. Um, I think we'll start off doing it the way that they are telling us to and see how it goes. Um, I do have my square, which is very tough to get inside of here. So yeah, I think we'll just start tightening it, tightening it, and then I will use my square and see if the frame is indeed square. Um, I'm just trying to think of how I want to do it so that we don't miss corners. I think I will tighten all the parts like corner by corner. So this corner has one, two, three, four, five, six bolts. We'll do this, then we'll move to this corner. Uh, you guys can't see because I always do that. We'll start with all the bolts in this corner. So six bolts here. Then we'll do all the bolts here, all the bolts here, all the bolts here. Then when we confirm that that's square, we will flip the printer, do the same on top, corner, 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 corner. And then the last thing will just be this little T, T back plate right here. <clears throat> I think that's the, uh, I think that's gonna be the game plan. And it's not gonna be fun because again, getting, I don't think it's possible guys. <laughs> I don't see how I can tighten it with the wrench. Like there's hardly enough space for me to even get my hand in here to, to sort of grab this. I, I think we're going to just tighten it with the driver. Um, maybe on some of them, it's a little bit easier, but it's just, there's no way for me to get this in here and turn it. It'll, it'll, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. There's gotta be a better way. Let's see. I wonder if these holes are intended to help with getting to those bolts. 
Because if that's the case, then I might maybe I'm being dumb. Maybe these are these slots are in like supposed to help. No. Maybe. So maybe we tighten with driver, and then once it gets nice and tight, then we'll take the uh, the wrench and do the last little bit. Maybe easier if you turn the whole frame. Yeah, so the concern I have about turning it upside down is gravity. Because there's some sloth in the frame, I don't think that'll be a good thing. I'd rather have it flat against the granite surface. I do agree with you. I think that flipping it, flipping it would make it easier to access. Uh, I just think that it's not going to be good for trying to get this thing square. Having the extrusions or like having the metal be going against gravity, kind of pulling downward. I don't know for certain though, like I'm not entirely positive, but. Yeah, I think that's, <clears throat> I think that's about. Yeah, we're definitely just doing it this way. Uh, do I have a small socket wrench with an extender? I, I don't. I should probably add that to my list of things to to, to get, but no, I, I don't. I have a large socket wrench somewhere that I used for car stuff, I, but I don't know. It, it wouldn't fit in here, it's huge. Nice corner. There we go. Hopefully, because these are nylon lock nuts, it'll stay secure, but we'll see. Okay, so that side's good. It looks like a, t yeah. I have no idea what the uh, estimate is in terms of from start to completion. I know that he had told me like, maybe I would want to do it in a couple, or like, I think he said two streams. And I was like, yeah, it's probably gonna be more than two streams. Uh, when I was talking to the, the creator of the project. <laughs> I was like, the way, the way I talk, like, uh, and get distracted, I don't, I don't see us. Actually, I think I can fit this. Yeah, so definitely use these slots. Um, there's slots in some, in pretty much all of these that do make it easier to access the nuts. Uh, especially with a wrench. With your fingers, no way, but with a wrench, it does make it a little bit easier. Maybe. Gotta include the 88. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
we gotta talk about pizza for <laughs> at least 30 minutes. <laughs> Looks pretty good to me too. All right, two quarters down. Let's go with this one. I just realized you guys can't really see anything. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, out of the, out of the... Let's see here. Uh, hey, what's up, Panzer? Uh, out of all the printers you built so far, which do you think has been the most fun? Not the best printer of the build you enjoyed, uh, but the build you enjoyed the most or least. <laughs> That's tough. Because um, a lot, there's been a really big gap in terms of um, printer builds for me. Like, I towards the beginning of when I was 3D printing, which is, you know, now like eight years ago, uh, a lot of them were kits. And then it sort of became, you know, not kits anymore. And then now there's, you know, printers like this or Voron or, or Rat Rig. Um, that is really tough. So, Um, okay, like, I mean, I could just run through some of the printers we've done lately. I, so my original V0.1, which I didn't do on stream, I did that all myself, was the most frustrating build by far. Uh, I had never built a Boron. I hadn't really worked with linear rails all that much. Most of the printers uh, previously were rollers or they were um, smooth rods. Um, and they're just so delicate. And so that was my most frustrating build by far. However, it was also probably the most rewarding printer build I've ever done. Uh, the end result to me was just like, it's like, you know, when, like if something's really easy, it's not as rewarding. And like, because I struggled, like I really struggled. There was parts, like part of it was like the Loctite that I was told to you to use. Um, I misunderstood and thought I was supposed to use it on everything. I had no idea that that, that was causing my ABS parts to crack. Um, I had issues with some of the rails. I misread an instruction. Like it was, it was a rough experience. Uh, but the end result was just so rewarding. Um, so that was a very memorable build for me. Maybe the most memorable uh, out of the builds I've done. Um, Switchwire was a pretty simple build. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. Switchwire was not simple. The build itself was simple. Uh, I had printed the wrong parts because of the way it was hosted. So. But that was a pretty simple build and it was pretty fun. Uh, Rat Rig was a great build. I, uh, up and up until, um, oh my butt, uh, up until the electrical uh, wiring, I don't know. I, I don't know if I have like, um, V0 by far out of all my builds has been the most memorable for better and for worse. <clears throat> but yeah, not, not, I, what was the question exactly? It was, um, you phrased it as, which do you think has been the mo oh, most fun? Wow, was it fun? It was fun, it was fun. Yeah, it was, I'm trying to convince myself, no, it, it was fun. The thing was, seeing it come together, this, this adorable beast, it was a lot of fun. I did enjoy that. Yeah. Um, picked up the kitty from ears, oh man. Uh, kids are with him in the bathroom, locked down. How's kitty doing? Sorry to hear that. Um, currently waiting for the thermostat thermostat to arrive because the stock one broke when I changed a hot end to a cheap all metal one on my M3 and it's been sitting there. Ooh. 
The PC Zero is a fun printer, but a pain to build. Yeah, it, it was. Like, I'm. You're not wrong. It absolutely is a pain to build. Um, I had a lot more fun on the second time around once I knew what I was doing and we did it on stream. That was fun. Uh, but yeah, it was a memorable build. I don't know if I'd say building the V-Zero is fun because it is pretty damn tedious. Okay, I think I tighten all these by now. I've been talking. I just keep switching, keep switching up nuts and tightening them, but I think we're good on this side. Yeah. Oops. Shit. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, last bottom side. Ugh. Yeah, I, I think that the... I mean, we'll see how the rest of the build goes, but I think that because of the way this printer is, that the most... Uh, time-consuming part of it might actually be this just just the frame um, we'll see once we do other stuff and you know future streams but I, I think that we may end up just doing the frame today and leaving because I think we're at we're almost at three hours and I still have a bit to go on the frame so it might be so it might be frame day Yeah, BB's is, yeah, still going. I want to get the frame done. Oh, you know what? Yeah, again, use the slots. The slots make it easy to get some of the nuts. Yeah, that's right. Uh, BB's is like the V0. I don't know anyone that's built three, I don't think. I've got two under my belt. And it's probably, probably all I'll do. I mean, we'll, I'll probably work on the V0s more and upgrade to the 0 0.2 when it's out, but I don't know if I'll build another. Oh, come on. These corner ones suck. There we go. Come on, man. <laughs> the farthest corner ones are not easy to reach. There we go. All right, there's one right here. Then we get to flip it over. I think the other side will be easier though. They're not, yeah, the other side will definitely be easier because there's not um, the bottom corners that make it a little bit more challenging. All right, let's see, let's two more on this side. That. And like that. Oh shit. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then we'll flip it. Oh, I should ch check it. I, I think we're pretty dang good. Building on this granite, or this quartz is really helping. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay. Right. Ooh. Uh, not a bad little machine, just put clipper on the oh nice dude. Yeah, the KP3S is cool. It's it's a fun, fun machine. Even stock, I mean again, just throwing clipper on it in the powder coated bed, it's it's been pretty cool. I um do have plans for it still, just you know, again, there's with <laughs> time is the biggest issue with all that, but um yeah, I, I think the KP3S KP3S is a very cool, um, inexpensive 3D printer. And again, pretty underrated. It, it seems like it's it's starting to get a lot more of the attention than I think it deserves for its price point. Um, but that was one that was recommended by quite a few people to me. And um, I definitely see why. Oh, interesting. I have bolts. I don't... I'm a little bit confused. I don't think I installed all the bolts correctly for this. We're gonna tighten it as is, um, but it looks like there's two bolt holes there, two bolt holes here. 
think I need to in insert more bolts into this. Um... Uh, I'll do that last. Let me just get all of this. Enjoy my Trident more than my 2.4. Build is easier, tune better, and it can run faster. Although it may be because my Trident is a 300 of people. Oh, gotcha. I still really want to build a 2.4. Just because I feel like it's such an like iconic printer in the Voron space. And um, the quad gantry leveling is pretty freaking cool in my opinion. See what he's saying though about using the wrench um because the wrench you have more leverage from the wrench side like all these ones that i'm done tightening the wrench is able to tighten them a bit more so it's probably not a terrible idea to go around and add a couple of more turns to these using the wrench because it sucks using the wrench on the other side isn't fun um but once you have it set up like this and it's flipped upside down it's much easier to access all these nuts, and so it's not as big of a deal. But yeah, I definitely can get some more turns. So I'm gonna, um, there's a couple things we need to do. So I'm gonna go around the top here and just all the nuts that are exposed now. Um, gonna tighten them. So that's good. So yeah, basically, I think that's the play, is tighten them as much as you can with the driver, and then once it's tight, use the, use the, oops, use the wrench to get that little bit of extra. Last thing I'm gonna do is just quickly run through these guys up top. It should only take a second or two, maybe a little bit longer than that. Yeah, definitely longer than that. <laughs> Try any except for electronics being on the bottom. Oh, on the, on the 2.4, are they on the back of the printer then, and not the bottom? Oops. Oh wow, this one I was able to tighten a lot more by using the wrench. Okay. 
think this is the last side. Okay. 2.4 is on the bottom, unless you go, okay, gotcha, they are on the bottom. So it's the standard. Yeah, so. Wait, what the heck, why are these? How are these still loose? It doesn't make any sense. Wait, oh yeah, I didn't tighten. Yeah, I'm, duh. Okay, so there's a few spots that I missed. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is, is tighten the top ones first. Definitely a bit of work to get the frame together on this guy. But again, I think that it's the frame on this because of it's like, it's so much of the brackets that are sort of built into it or the mounting points that I think this is probably gonna be a pretty big chunk of, of the build. Uh, I think the only Voron with any electronics not on the bottom is the V0.1. Isn't the uh, power supply mounted on the bottom and the um, uh, buck converter on the bottom? Pretty sure it is on the 0 0.1. But the 0 0.1 has the Pi and the SKR on the back. Oops. The 0 0.1 has a power on the bottom and the brains on the back, yeah. Okay. Okay, so we did miss, it looks like, dude, that sucks. Some of these. All right, I goofed a little bit. Um, I need to put two bolts there, two bolts there, two bolts there and two bolts there, which means that I need to loosen the top of this, and I don't think I'm going to do it at this second. Um, I might end up doing that off stream. It's just, it's literally just, I'll just show you guys, um, just that way it's done in time. These bolts, these bolts, these bolts, and these bolts. Um, and let me see here. Okay, so fully sets, I will... What is the reason that all the 3D printers have Allen and not cross bolts? Isn't it because they don't strip as easy? I feel like um, I feel like uh, Phillips head strip pretty easily. Uh, okay, so I'm probably going to add the lubrication to the pulleys before we do the next stream on this. Um, so we'll do definitely this next stream, which is putting these together. Frame we just did, the Z axis, Rear ACM. Oh, interesting. So it goes straight into panels next. So two of the panels, linear guides. Yeah, the Z is a big part of it. So I have a feeling if I'm looking, so pulley sets and Z axis will probably be a stream. Um, X, Y plane. X, Y plane and yeah, bed's usually pretty quick. Extruder, enclosure, wiring. I have a feeling it's gonna be at least three to maybe four more streams to finish this entire build, uh, in all honesty. Um, so what we'll likely end up doing is, um, again, next Monday we're not streaming because my parents are here. So we'll stream next Wednesday, the uh, 3D printed Vector Finesse headphones. And then the next Monday we will have a stream. And on that Monday we will continue this. 
And then that Wednesday, two days later, we will also do this to like at least do two streams that week and try to make some progress on this because I would like to, like I want to get this build done, um, but I also want to be realistic. So that's what I'll probably do. So next week is the headphone stream on Wednesday. And then the following week will be Monday, Wednesday, building on this and we'll see how much we can knock out and how, um, how much time I can put in. I might organize some of the hardware beforehand. I will correct these bolts, or not correct the bolts, but insert the eight missing bolts into here. Uh, and then we'll pretty much be ready to rock and roll. So, uh, initial impressions are it's nuts. I mean, like this, it was a just absolutely insane amount. I don't have a, I, all the scales I have in here are really light scales, but it's a very, very heavy, um, <laughs> very, very heavy. So I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Um, uh, Felix, uh, hood bolt is more difficult to drive tight than an Allen. Yeah, I, I majorly believe that. Yeah, it's 408, uh, 407, 408 here. So Aaron should be home any second. He's probably just going to eat, finish this up, and then... Um, I missed a stream about the Z-Belt mod ender. How'd it go? It went really good. It was a long stream. It took five hours. Um, it took a little bit longer because apparently on the Ender 3v2, Crowley switched up their bolt pattern, and so... Instead of being able to easily remove the left and right plates to the like X, Z carriage, um, I had to completely disassemble it. So take off the top bar, remove the entire thing. It took a bit longer. Um, and then there was one point I screwed up where there's like a note that says if the bolts aren't tight, glue them in place or something like that. And they felt pretty tight to me. Got everything together and realized that one of the nuts had popped out. So we had to disassemble uh, after attempting surgery. It was like playing the game Operation and it, it, didn't, it didn't do well. Uh, but yeah, it went really well. The it's an awesome, it is an awesome mod, and I am still working on that printer as far as some of the clipper conversion stuff on it. But yeah, it, it turned out awesome. That was a really great stream. So I think on that note, we'll end the stream, guys. I uh, have a, the TV coming tomorrow, so for next week we will have the I'll be able to see chat from over there, which will be so nice, just so convenient, and I'll hopefully be able to. I'm gonna have the. Uh, live view of the stream up on that TV as well so I can see if something's out of focus or if the autofocus is tripping out. It should be easier for me to monitor stuff. Uh, and then between now and Sunday, I will also schedule the one year stream anniversary, which we said was gonna be on Wednesday, October 26th. Uh, yes, Wednesday, October 26th, same time, which is noon Pacific Standard. And that will be a ton of fun, so. Uh, on that note, thank you guys so much for hanging out. Uh, thank you for the new members. Thank you for uh, all the likes, all the chat, uh, for uh, telling me, I think twice, that I had assembled part of the frame incorrectly. Um, there's only one image, it seems like, of the frame, and so I just was missing certain things. But thank you very much, because it's nice to, I'd much rather catch that stuff now than get further on in the build, start mounting things, and be like, oh, this beam is on backwards, or these beams are inverted, or something like that. So, um, Jose, hey, there's, uh, there's Erin. What did, uh, she's probably in the driveway. That's why the dog is trying to freak out. Anyways, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your week and I will hopefully be seeing you guys uh, next Wednesday. All right, take care everyone. Bye, have a great day or night.